Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of the Ghastly Media Podcast. Joining me today we have Trunks, Gamer, Jin, hey. and returning we have Gabriel. Yo, what's up everybody? Yeah, the full crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to, to touch on, which is very important for us, and very immediate for us here at the Gas Let Me Get a Podcast, is the five-year anniversary of Guns of the Hellgas, which is the group that's, that we call for. Yeah, five years, bro. Five years, bro. So we covered a bit about this in episode one of the Gas Media podcast about how we all met and about the, the group as a whole. So it's it's great that we've made it so long. And as we've been going, things have just been getting better and better. The podcast, the YouTube channels, the blog, our PlayStation home events, our scheduled game nights, our trips to E3, and it's it just continues to snowball, and we just keep getting bigger and better. So here's to another five. Yes. Yes, Yay! Sir. Going from there right into the big news story this month, Gamescom. So Microsoft and Sony both had their conferences. Does anyone have anything special to say about either of them? Let's open it up with uh, Trunks. All right, man. Um, as y'all know, the adopted little brother of E3, uh, Gamescom, <laughs> happened. And, you know, not, not, not a lot of people really tune into Gamescom and are, like, as, like, excited for it as an E3. But I watched it, you know, I watched it here and there, but I caught the recaps and whatnot. And judging from uh, what I've seen from Sony, I guess we're going to go, we'll go with Sony first, correct, Orfeo? So, um, I think we'll start with Sony yep, yep. first. Uh, okay, so for Sony, uh, I was really interested in the Bloodborne uh, gameplay. They showed that. That shit looked pretty beast, I can't lie. Um, I don't know who made it. I think it's the creators of Resident Evil were making that game or something, but, you know. Uh, no, either way. Okay, so, all right. So, I mean, either way, I mean, the gameplay looked pretty good. Uh, the character looks great. Character design is really nice. The environments look great. And Sony has always needed that, like, RPG to, to blow up. Like, you know, in the past, they've had White Knight Chronicles, and Valkyria Chronicles and all these great games and Demon Souls, of course. But with this game, Bloodborne, I think that they're finally going to find like their hit, where you know their hit RPG. And I think that's going to spawn a franchise of multiple games. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it, but they had this thing called what's it called, The Children or something? I forget the name of it. It's saying uh, something about the Tomorrow's Children. The Tomorrow Children. Yeah, dude, that game. Uh, it looks like pretty games. good. <laughs> yeah, it looked great. Um, if they were, you know, like, dude, the game looks really good. I hope that it's, you know, encourages multiplayer. Hope it encourages teamwork. The story of the whole, like, Karl Marx of, you know, communism. You know, I like that story. The backstory looks great. The little, you know, people being trapped in those bodies is pretty nice. Um, the story, I don't know anything about it, but all I know is the backstory of what's going on. So, yeah, the game looks pretty good. Uh, Until Dawn, I think they showed that trailer. That looks alright. It's like an action RPG. Action R- what am I talking about? It's it's a uh, it's a uh, horror game, correct? So uh, I think it looks good. I'm I'm a horror game buff. If it's if it's at a reasonable price, I'll buy it. If the story's great, I'll buy. It. You know, I played uh, you know uh, freaking uh, Outlast. I love that game. This Andy, love it. Red, Red Burrows masters of that shit right now um and also the one thing that you know i guess you could say for my closing thoughts Tony did a pretty good job it wasn't amazing it wasn't bad it was just an okay conference they showed some good things uh i guess i was more i guess the most interesting thing was that there was no gorilla games ip and that was a huge letdown for a lot of people shock i mean dude yeah. every, like, especially for us at ghastly you know, <laughs> and the Gassy <laughs> Media Podcast, everyone was so let down because we were just promised that, yo, this might be, might be there, it might be there, and then it comes out, and it's not on there. So, you know, maybe for TGS, who knows. But other than that, 
nothing really that amazing about the, the conference. However, I did like the whole PT thing. That was really that was really cool. Uh, seeing that they that we got the exclusive demo. Um, I haven't even beat it. I played like five minutes of it. I didn't really care about it. But other than that, man, I didn't really have much else to say about it. It was really short, really to the point, and there were not a lot of games I cared about. So I think I'm going to pass this one on to Gamer316, my boy Nick. You know, I know he got some thoughts about this, man of many words. <laughs> well, not, not, not so much. Many of like a few things to say, but you know, overall went with the game, Gamescom. I wasn't really impressed too, too much with it with the Sony's press conference as a as uh, Tron Trump was concluding, the, the main thing I was looking forward to was uh, Gr- Gorilla Games' IP that we know, like, nothing about. There's no pictures. There's not even a name or anything that we know about. It's like, I want to know something about this game, because it's like, it's like we're, we're all huge fans of kills on here at the uh, I Guess Media Podcast. And really? it's like, that, that, that's everything where we're, well, that, that's like one of the big things where we're, where we're looking forward to is like, what's coming from Gorilla Games. But uh, other than that, um, there, there, that, there was that, that one showing, showing from our uh, 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 of uh, Metal no, no Gear Solid, Solid 5, it's like that, that was cool and all, I'm a huge Metal no, no Gear fan, I like that, but that wasn't a big deal to me, because we, we saw the same area at E3, and like, but besides those like two, two little things, there wasn't really much that came to come for me, not, nothing I really cared about. And I think I'll we'll pass this off to Jim. Yeah, so, uh, Going back on what a uh, gamer said about Metal Gear Solid, I'm not a fan of Metal Gear. I just don't like the game. They just don't do it for me. But uh, whenever I watch the Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain trailer with all the box stuff, uh, it actually made me laugh out loud. So you know, I thought that was pretty funny and. Good for them. It entertained me at least. Uh, let's see, what else? I know Ninja Theory showed Hellblade, but... Oh, boy. <laughs> I could not care less about Ninja Theory anymore. But... I know a lot of people are talking about how... See, how S- the... Similarities. Yeah, the similarities the between the characters. Similarities. Which I think actually what they might be doing is, all right, let's make a game and then we're gonna put one of our characters in there and they're gonna look like this character from this game and then like every subsequent game they're like, hey, let's put this character in here and this character in here, just to be yeah. like, why not? <laughs> it's our characters, let's do it. It you know, feels like they're um, recycling character designs. I don't know. It does. Ever since it, the it first kinda, game, it, it kind of questions like the originality by doing that, or like they're if they're daring to create new character designs. I mean, Noriko from Heavenly Sword, and then the chick from Enslaved. Now you also have, you know, this new IP, Hellblade, and you have, you know, Kai, and then you got this chick. I think she has Serana, Serani. I don't know, something like that, mm. and. Even the title, like, the title, I thought, I actually thought that I was going to be a spiritual successor, and then they confirmed that it's not. It's not even a spiritual successor. It's not a continuation. It's its own game. I'm like, well, wait a second. You have Hellblade, it's like the Yang, or like the Yang version of uh, Heaven Sword. Heaven Sword, Hellblade. Like, does that have any, does that tie in anywhere? I don't know, man. I saw that, and just yeah. like, I tweeted about it. And then it just, like, a lot of other people started pointing that out, too. And, like, I mean, a lot of people were tweeting about that. And they came from that, yeah, it has nothing to do with it. Well, I think... Yeah, I agree with you on that, man. Totally. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that shit. I was, like, kind of questions me about him. So, and also the time, the exclusivity. I think it's maybe, like, hey, I'll just get Heavy Sword 2. A great way to cash in on our on the game that we've been waiting for all this time. <laughs> it was supposed to be a trilogy never happened. Now I've got the new IP, and then it's going to go on Xbox. Yeah, Hellblade. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, yo, I, I got a quick question out there. I remember one just real quick. Just quick, real quick. Um, like, what do you all think about, um, in terms of, you know, I guess you call this term console loyalty? 
you know, a lot of people uh, feel that, oh, man, if this franchise was born on this system and it's thrived on this system, then you should stay loyal to that company and, you know, and remain on that system, you know, or at least be causal to it where, you know, you get exclusive content. Like, I guess I'm referring to games like, you know, Hellblade, the Kingdom Hearts 3, when, whenever that comes out after the day after Jesus comes back. Um, <laughs> you know, that along with, like, you know, Metal Gear Solid Five. A lot of guys think that those games belong on a PlayStation. They shouldn't be multi-platform. So what do you all think about that? Like, should companies be low or should you just get your, your money and go where the, where the dollar is at? Well, if I may, I would say that when it comes to business decisions, you know, companies are out there to make money. If someone's going to give them a ton, ton of cash to make a game exclusive to a certain system, then if, if they think it's a really smart business move, then they should go for it, but as a consumer and as a gamer, I don't like it. Um, if a game is multi-platform, it should stay multi-platform. If a game is exclusive because it's developed in-house, it's a first-party exclusive, and that they want to keep it to that certain system, that's something I can expect to have happen, and that's a good reason to own that system. But I mean, something like build an audience, the audience right. build on that on that system. Yeah, like, dude, I just feel weird about it, man. Because then like, they switch I, the like, game really to a different about. platform, and then it's, like, a different audience that no one knows about the game, and then it's, like, the game just, like, starves. No one buys it, and, like, no one's supporting it. Because nobody knows the game, and it's, like, awkward. Like, I, I kind of feel, like, I don't know, like, when Metal Gear went to Xbox, like, it was, like, what, what is, like, the people on Xbox, like, what is this game? You know, I guess they're targeting the few people that, I mean, the people that probably switched and stuff, but... Also, I'm, I'm not with with, with Matt, Metal Gear uh, uh, unless Xbox people actually own like a PS One or whatever. They never played the the uh, original Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, they'll be completely lost in the franchise. So that's that's another thing too. It's like you missed out on the entire you know like saga. You don't even know what's going on. It's like, I mean, I don't know. That's like tuning in on like an episode of Dragon Ball Z when uh, you know they're at the Cell Saga, but you completely missed like the whole build up. You know, of how, like, Goku became Super Saiyan and all that stuff. So it's like, I don't know, that's like some of the real key parts to, like, you know, I don't know. It's weird starting in a franchise and you can't even, like, you just get, like, a piece of it, a fraction of it. Uh, I, it feels awkward, especially as a gamer. I, I guess, you know, as a company, they want to make money, okay? But to the gamer, it's fucked up because, I mean, excuse my French, but, like, you get into the series, now you're going to be forced to, like, you know, if you want to play, you're going to have to buy, you know, fork over to the other system or buy invest into another system in the end because it's like it, you're technically be, being given the demo. Like, okay, you can only play this part of the story, but, the you know, find out what happens in the rest of the saga, continue the rest of the saga on this platform. You know, it's like, so now I buy this game, I got into it, now I have to buy this platform to finish it. You know, so it's really weird, especially that the whole conclusion to Snake Story is on exclusive on the PlayStation 3 currently right now, <laughs> you know, as of this podcast. So we don't know if they're going to make a remake. Yeah, we don't yeah. know if they're going to make a remake maybe later. I don't know. They, they, the game has so much references to the PS3 itself, like it was designed for the PS3. So I don't know. I mean, dude, Snake has a DualShock 3 controller <laughs> in the game. I don't know, I can be probably edited, though, but whatever. Yeah. Well, we'll get on to the topic of remakes a little later on the show. Yeah. But, uh, well, getting back to Gamescom, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on, Jim? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things. To Kilowerks, they showed some more about their game Rhyme, I guess that's how you say it. I'm Asian, so it looks like Remake, so. But, yeah. So, I guess... Rhyme, and that looks like a. It kind of reminds me of like Wind Waker graphics. And oh, I know what game you're talking about. Yeah, so that, that, that game, game looks game, pretty that cool. Game was, that game was. Really, I'm still trying to figure out what the game is about. I think it's yeah, it's a puzzle <laughs> platformer type game. Yeah, I guess. Kind of sorta. I I didn't see a weapon. I didn't see a weapon on him. I don't even. I mean, I don't even know if there is like bad guys or little minions you fight. I think it's just exploration, climbing. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. I read about that recently, and they say there's no combat in that game at all. It's all exploration. Yeah. Oh, okay then. So. Yeah, so that'll be nice. 
Yeah. Visual is really nice. You get swim and everything. So yeah. It's like you're. It's kind of like you're buying half of Wind Waker. <laughs> Just the exploration. <laughs> <of> it. <laughs> yeah, it's the. Uh... Wind Waker. It's like half a game. I mean, I don't know, man. I, PlayStation you know, Wind Waker. It's gorgeous. You know, it's just like, it just feels like a piece of another game. You know? Well, it's the half that matters, because Legend of Zelda gameplay always sucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> on this podcast and it's a computer. Don't have to put like that again. You don't know Link like that. Oh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of touch on was the Drive Club for PS4 on, uh, at Gamescom this year. They released some new information about the club interactions and how that kind of works out. Basically, you're in a club, like, let's say Guns of the Hellgas is on Drive Club. And they're like, hey, you know, we like playing this game, but we're not like, let's say, a resident gamer for, like, Grand Theft Auto, or not Grand Theft Auto, Gran Turismo, sorry. Gran Turismo, like, uh, Ventura. And it's like, oh, well, Ventura's really Uh-oh. good at these games, and he loves playing them, but I like playing the game, but I'm not necessarily as good as him, so he can... Go on and be like, oh yeah, you know, let me do this challenge over here, and, you know, then we can continue on our way, and I can go back and do it later if I want to. Actually, whenever whenever the club actually plays together, then everybody gets the experience points, whether you're actually playing at that time or not. So, let's say, me and Sons got on, and we started playing, and then, you know, like, Orpheo's in the club, but he's asleep but that doesn't matter because he'll still get points for you know being associated with us so i thought that was pretty cool and uh the app interactions which is part of why i like the ps4 they're reaching out they're branching out into other technologies they're like hey you know you may not be playing the game but you have a smartphone like i have a Note 2, Samsung Galaxy Note 2, and I can go on my phone and be like, hey, you know, I want to watch my friends play because I'm on a train and I've got nothing to do for eight hours or one hour. So that was pretty interesting, and I really like that bit about it. Other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of things. I mean, there was YouTube, which, you know, like, okay, you know, YouTube's coming to the PS4. Well, that's good, because you finally get all those people that were on YouTube. They're like, oh, well, you can't be on YouTube anymore. But now you can be on YouTube again. So that's good. And, oh, uh... Man. People yeah. be trying to freaking shut down your background music. <laughs> shut down your channel, because you got... What that shit? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think it depends, like... Maybe if you... Why are they doing with Twitch now? That's already yeah, like because I think what Google bought Twitch, or who bought someone bought uh, Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and they they want to implement the same rules, dude. Google ruined Twitch. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Google. They want to implement. They're going to do YouTube treatment. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Anyway. And uh, let's see. SharePlay. SharePlay sounds like a good idea definitely yeah she's like hey i don't have this game but i have playstation plus so i can play with my friend without actually owning the game advertising yeah it's like free advertising so i mean can't really go wrong with that mm-hmm. brilliant move on their part yeah and let's see the only other thing i was actually interested in is the new uh destiny DLC and whatnot, and the release of more game modes. So, for someone like me that isn't particularly interested in uh, things like Team Deathmatch and whatnot, that's not my favorite part of online gaming. Me neither. So they have like, oh, well you can do this, or you can do this over here. So I think they showed off like 
three more, three or four different game modes, so that made me pretty happy. I mean, other than that, there wasn't a whole lot that I hadn't already seen, or stuff that I actually really cared about, so uh, I guess I'll pass it to Suns. Alrighty. Alright, thank you very much. <laughs> Anyways, my thoughts on Gamescom. Hmm. Oh, two games caught my attention. Uh, actually, one to uh, actually came. Actually, one grabbed my attention by surprise. I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting this when it was announced. But uh, what really, really like I liked a lot was Tearaway for PS4. Yeah. And originally, yeah, originally it was for the Vita. And you know, I saw the Vita version. I played it at E3, and I was like, yeah, it's like. You know, was it was it for me to buy? Eh. But I'm gonna tell you something right now, dude. When I saw the PlayStation 4 version, though, oh boy. <laughs> like, all right, man. They had a sample. Like, they had the little dude. All right, she'd be like running around and like exploring. Like the, the freaking the town looks amazing. The town looks like something. I mean, I don't know why, but the ocean like a paper ocean and you split the ocean and then you got like you know you gotta clear the way and there's like this freaking sea monster at the bottom of the ocean with glowing eyes and like whoa that looks scary or whatever <laughs> and then like you get on a freaking paper airplane and start flying around exploring the world i'm like dude what i didn't see the paper airplane in like the first one and it's like all at nighttime you got the they, they didn't have it in the first one yeah like the town's all illuminated at night like you know the lights of the city you know, the little the little town and stuff i'm like and it's like raining or like something, you see, you see the rain, you got the paper wind, and you're just like like exploring, flying a freaking paper airplane. I'm like, dude, when I saw that, I'm like, all right. I don't know why, but it gave me like that type of like adventure quest, like Wind Waker did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wind Waker is one of my favorite Zelda games for uh, GameCube. <clears throat> and yeah, you know, when I saw this, like, I'm like, it, it, that same feeling I got when I first when I first saw Wind Waker and played it. Like exploring the ocean, riding around that little boat and stuff, and like going to new islands and stuff, and like you know, and then you hear like I don't know that same feeling I I got when I saw Tearaway, and knowing Media Molecule, like yeah man, I mean my first platinum on the PS3 was OVC, and by Media Molecule I fell in love with that game. I I lived on that game. I would not play anything else. That was my game. I I created a freaking Metal Gear level. And, dude, it was a battle level. It was a, it was a game I always wanted to play. A game that you can play against, and, you know, with or against your friends. You know, like, kill your friends. It's, it's fun. And it's a couch game. I've made a couch level. It's super fun. But, yeah, when I saw Tearaway, like, this, it just brought me that same feeling. Knowing Medium Molecule, like, I know they're going to deliver with this title. And, you know, this is their new IP. It looks good. I, I trust them. I played their other games. Always loved all of them. And yeah, dude, that's gonna be one that I will be getting. I was caught surprise. I was not expecting. To, I thought Terraway was gonna be like a Vito franchise, but no, PS4 game. I was like full blown, next gen, gorgeous. I love it. And uh, they, you know what? Uh, Sony does need more like adventure type games like that in their in their arsenal. Uh -huh. And Terraway, dude, it's a, a gorgeous game, dude. I seriously love this game. But all right, something else that caught my attention. Uh, one of you guys brought it up. Indie game created by uh, Japan Studios uh, within Sony. Uh, I actually like this game a lot. It seemed very interesting. Uh, the Tomorrow Children. That game looks dope. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, trying to cover the beginning. Pretty much the similarity of the world. Uh, I mean, dude, I love that, man. It looks it looks awesome. It's like this. Uh, out. It's like a Cold War gone. You know, experimental experiment gone wrong during the Cold War. You got all this stuff leading up. You have to try to, like, you know, all of humanity was imprisoned and, like, you know, these little Russian, I don't know what those call, those things are called, those little Russian puzzle things that you open up and there's another dude in there and you open that one, there's another dude, and whatever. <laughs> and you keep, yeah, so, I don't, well, I don't know what those things are called, but, uh, yeah, like, all the, like, all the humanity are imprisoned in those and you have to mine them and find them and, and rebuild your civilization while these monsters invade and try to destroy your civilization. And, you know, so you have to, like, combat these monsters with the resources you mine. You you know, you work together and, maybe, you know, you form the union. It's cool, dude. It's like that, you know, it has that cool little, uh, 
you know, rise, you know, rise an empire, you know, kind of feel to it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm into the hell gas stuff. So when I see that, it's like, yeah, man, build an empire. Let's go ahead and beat those monsters. But anyways, that, uh, that indie game has my, has my attention. Uh, another game also got my attention. I, I didn't get the name of it. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but they're the same creators that did, uh, Stardust. And it, you go with, like, I think you write these mecha things. It's like a shooter. It's, it's kind of like a top-down shooter. But it looks pretty dope, too. That one that one has my attention a little bit. Not not as much as, uh, the Tomorrow Show, because that was completely brand new to me. Uh, and, uh, let's see. What else got my attention during Gamescom? And be honest, I don't know, man. Uh, I think that's pretty much... I could be missing something, but I feel that I just feel like my main highlight was just Tearaway. I saw Tearaway. Dude, I had to, bro. I, I went on Twitter. I was looking for the video that they displayed. I'm like, where's that video? I got to share this. I shared it twice or <laughs> some. I, I don't even know. Like, I love that. Dude, I posted it on my face. I posted it on my freaking Twitter. I had it. I just really loved that video. And like, it just, like, it brought back, like, nostalgia. I have really, like, nostalgic memories just seeing that game. It's like, dude, this is... This is just one of the genres that I always wanted to have on PlayStation, and I'm I'm so happy. Like you know, Tearaway is on a console, like on to be played on a big TV. You know, like I don't know, it's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I uh, don't know if it has multiplayer, but it does have the creativity aspect, which I love. You can create whatever character you want. Like you can like create like you like you know cut it like whatever cut out like cardboard or paper cutouts of anything. You know, and literally create. I've seen people create like Link, like Toon Link on Tearaway. It looks legit. And you're like, what? And people create it. You can like do anything. It's awesome. Like, you know, so I don't know, man. I'm looking forward to the game. It looks really fun. And like for me, when it comes to creativity or editing, I'm all about that. Like, I'm on that. So, anyways, uh, that's it. That's my thoughts on Gamescom. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Uh, but for me, my main interest was Tearaway. So. Over to the host with the most, Sir Ophiel. Yes, yes. I agree with you. I mean, I agree with a lot of what everyone has said. Uh, there was some really nice stuff at Gamescom, at PlayStation's press conference. Uh, I think I'll just pick out a few of the ones that weren't touched upon too much. Uh, congrats to Sony on 10 million PS4 sold worldwide. That yeah. Is, that is <laughs> August. It hasn't been here yet. Yeah, they sold on for that shit. Yeah. Yeah, so not yeah. Yo, you saw so that. They, two they, consumers. They, they specified that right in the beginning. They they wanted to make it very clear. They're like, dude, I'm surprised no one laughed when he said that. It's like, uh, just to make this clear, sold, not shit. Like I would have been in the audience, like, ha. Huh! Like I, I would have. I'm surprised no one did that. Like no one did that. They were trying to be I, professional. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't care. Dude. I mean, yo, when, when, you got, like, people, when you got people trying to, like, you know, like, mislead you, like, they deserve it. I don't want people misleading. I want people to tell me actual numbers. Like, talk to me straight up. You know, don't, don't try to, like, sway me some other direction. Nah, don't do that. No, I agree <laughs> I with thought, I thought, at Microsoft. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was awesome. But anyways. Uh, also, the PS4 uh, software update, like uh, Tim was saying. The pass the controller feature, the play together feature, the play together is just, it is such a brilliant feature, how you don't need to own the game, and you can invite someone to try, and if they like it, they can buy it, that's going to increase software sales on their part, especially if it's heavily integrated with exclusives. You know, I, I have a gripe with that, man. I don't know, man, I think that's going to destroy credibility for tokens. I think if you're going to be doing that, like, they should disable, like, tokens. They may. Like, I functions. think they probably will. I think they know that sometimes... People are just gonna like go in there, and if and if it was wide open, they probably give them. Because what's trophy. the point? Yeah, what's the point of tro the trophy system then? Because people do that. I for, think like, they'll disable it. Yeah, because I mean, if they, hey, I think mean, anybody can get you that trophy. I don't know if you got it. Like, or do you know been, if it is? If it's gonna. There could be, be people like right, trying. Yeah. Yo, there could be people trying to bank that off of that, like make money off of that. But like, yo, guess what? I'll get you the platinum on that. Just give me like a fifty dollar PSN card. You know, I'll get you the platinum for that game. And I, there'll be people who pay that amount of money, bro. Yeah, you'll be surprised how much money people will pay for, like, exclusive home content on, on PS Home. So, like, I mean, for something digital that isn't real, but is, you know, like, people As wouldn't Kevin Butler would say. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go, you got it. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. So, Orphan, do you have I'm, confirmation 
if it's going to be trophies disabled. I mean, I think all we know right now is that it's just going to, you know, just be that. Other than that, I don't know anything else about it. I was just hoping you knew. No, they haven't touched upon that yet. But I would guess and I would hope that they would disable trophy support if you did that. I'm pretty sure we'll, we'll learn the details or more details soon. soon but I'll, I'll, like, also with us, uh, it's like I've actually been paid to uh, earn platinums for people. <laughs> <laughs> and that, see, that's what I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but you know, to be honest, I think if people are willing to do it, they're gonna they're gonna figure out a way, and it will be done, regardless. I mean, but I just think that this is just an easier way for them to do it, because I mean, who would really like jeopardize their account or risk their account? I mean, there, I mean, there's people. I mean, I would never give my account to anybody else. I I wouldn't. But I mean, there's people that would. I mean, I I guess they're just so like. Yeah, hey, man, I, you know, I want to go ahead, I don't know, I want to go ahead and risk my, get someone my password, I mean, yeah, sure, they're going to have access to my, I don't know, well, I mean, the dumb ones will probably leave their credit card information on there, <laughs> uh, but, I, I mean, I guess I'd say, don't, don't do that, don't share your account, you didn't hear it from here to encourage you or anything, mm-hmm. you do not condone any of that sharing, there's like, no Like, Media sharing. says no to game sharing. Yeah, no to game sharing, it's bad. Hey, don't do that. That's right. <laughs> um, well, I think another great point of the, the Play Together feature of SharePlay is it has been said so far, that I guess this is actually a bad thing first, depending on how you look at it, that it's limited to one hour. So you can only have someone join you for one hour session. I'm not exactly sure how that would work. Like I was saying before, if, if you're in Gran Turismo, or if you don't have a game, if you don't have right. you own the game, it's like a right. one hour session. Okay. So, 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 like, if you're playing Ground Trees and someone wants to join you, they can join you for an hour, but then after that hour, they're, I guess, they're kicked off or disconnected. Right. But uh-huh. then, can you just, like, invite them five seconds later for another hour? Like, how exactly would that work? Anyway, um, that, 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 that's like the PS Plus one-hour one trial, like, the PS3 has had for a while. Mm-hmm. But something I, I find curious about them and something I really like about that, and I was talking about this a little bit earlier as well, all of the game nights for Guns of the Hellgas last for one hour. <laughs> Which oh, means, <laughs> when all the cps 4s if half of us own the game, oh, or half of us want to join, we could all just like, <laughs> hop on. Three game have, like, nights. nights. <laughs> hey, it's free. It's like one hour game. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that is true. I, I think, I th- I'm not sure if people actually looked into that or they know about it, but yeah, our game nights are actually one hour. The reason why they're so short is because we have a lot of other events going to be, you know, happening after it, back to back. So we try to have, like, one hour sessions for each one. I mean, there's, like, days that we have, like, three events, you know, back to back with each other and stuff. So, you know, like, people say, oh, those events are short. Well, not to us, because we join another event right after. And we have about three hours of separate events. We do a lot of stuff, you know. I mean, we have smaller run times, but we have more events. In the end, I mean, I don't know. It works for us. Uh-huh. Yeah. We don't get bored either. It's always something new, so... But sure, that's what that one hour thing. <laughs> that might actually fight him. In the, I mean, I might like I don't know. But yo, know, people like the game that much, they'll buy it. Cause I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen when people play a game enough, they end up buying it. And you know, so I it, it's promotion. Not only that, when you're playing the game, people are gonna see what you're playing, and that's also that's also promotion right there. That's advertising. Because people are going to see, yeah. like, hey, that, that guy's playing that game. That game was interesting. One of my friends are playing. I might, I might as well try that game out, too. I might pick it up. Dude, I've seen that. I've seen people on my list play a game that I've been playing, like, for a long time. I see them, you know, and, like, after a while, they'll start, you know, they actually, I notice that they actually start playing the game, too. And they get on the game and stuff. I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's cool. It's ripping off. Just spread the like ball. play with the friends are playing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Spread the joy. <laughs> so, the last thing that I would say is, really stuck out to me at PlayStation's press conference at Gamescom was uh, the combination of the great talents of Hideo Kojima and the director Guillermo del Toro for the upcoming Silent Hills. That is, I think, huge. I mean, Hideo Kojima is a master of game design. He's done wonders with the Metal Gear series in particular, but he's also done a few other things uh, such as Snatcher and Zone of the Enders, which are very awesome games for those people who played them. And then you have on the other end of that, Guillermo del Toro, who I'm a big fan of his movies, uh, Pan's Labyrinth. The Big Rim. Eh. <laughs> huh? The Big <Pacific> Rim. 
That's okay, Pacific Rim is the exception to the rule. <laughs> I don't like that, right. but almost say. all of his other movies. Uh, nah, like, nah, I'm really he into is it. a masterful director, so I do he all hard really like, outside of that movie. Yeah. <laughs> outside of that movie, yeah. <laughs> when he does, when he, he does horror, he does it really well. Yeah, uh, pure horror. Wait, so, so, so hang on. Um, yeah, Guillermo del Toro. He's a movie director. I, I thought that he was like he had, he was a uh, director for Silent Hill. That that's not the case. The movie, the movie Silent Hill, the game. No, 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 not the movie. Oh, okay, that, the game. Oh, okay. yeah, they're they're I'm doing a saying. game together, which which is huge because Guillermo is such a visual like juggernaut in his yeah. films, and Hideo or Hideo or Hideo, however the fuck yeah. it's out. I need I need uh Hideo could you? Is it Hideo? Because everyone's yeah, always yeah. Hideo. Hideo that it's Hideo. It's like all right. I'm He's say Hideo Japanese. Kojima. It's Hideo. Like, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> We all know he is a masterful storyteller. So if we can bring together, like, honestly, in a perfect world, Hideo does yeah. the story, Guillermo does the visuals, and this game and the Flying Silent Hill games are resurrected. Like, legitimately, that is a resurrection made in heaven. That's freaking amazing. It is. And when you, if, when you, when you uh, get your hands on or at least watch YouTube footage of the interactive teaser, that is crazy. Like, I know Chun said that he's only had, like, five minutes playtime with it, but I've watched multiple YouTube streams, and it's like every time someone plays it, different things happen. Yeah, it starts the same, and it ends the same if you reach the... Well, it doesn't end the same, but it starts the same, and you can kind of reach similar endings, but different stuff happens to you as you go through, and the crazy part is, when you watch people play it, they zoom in on things that don't look important, things that the casual gamer would just, like, bypass and think it's just part of the scenery when it's not. Like, if you turn and you see, like, a little black spot or what looks like a, a small broken hole in a wall and you zoom your camera in on it, it'll stand and it'll flash and just disappear. And it's like, what the hell? Like, you're expected to see something that small when you're walking through, like, a hallway to actually take the time out of your day to, like, scope in and check that out in detail. And then have it disappear. Yeah, and Orpheus, something else in the scenery. Dude. That's crazy. Orpheus, have you even uh, have you seen the entire walkthroughs, or have you just like watched a few of them? I've watched three different walkthroughs. Okay, so far. dude, they're so. I think they said that there are like ten different like you know, like versions of like the in betweens, uh, not like the beginning and end. The in between and end are both uh, definite, but the in betweens are like ten different versions of it. I got a version where I played the game. It's only going to be quick. I know we got to go on next topic. But, um, dude, I played it for a good 30 minutes, and I got so frustrated because there's a scene in there. I'm not going to tell you what happens. There's a scene where you have, like, a door, and, like, a baby is crying. And that's sick, it, yeah. It took me, like, 30 minutes for that door to completely open up. and I ke- <laughs> And it kept telling me, to look around and it's always like on like this radio voice it's so crazy he's like look around and i look around and it was like look behind you and you don't see anything behind you hideo kojima is a is a genius and with these two on a project together if it was a movie if it was a book if it was any song if it was anything i would be excited as i am right now because dude those two together would like dude oh my god put them on a resident evil game too Please, please. Definitely. But other than that, yeah, I ain't got much to say about that. Uh, I've, I've also played Planet Beta PT, like, I've played Beta for a couple hours. Uh, but, I'm, like, the, 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 the main, it's like, I hate board games. I'll just uh, tell you that now. I <laughs> will not deal with them, but, 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 like, this one I tried to, to, just because I heard it was by Kojima and whatnot. But, but, like, when I started up, I was scared instantly because of how realistic it looks. And that's because of the power of the Fox engine. It, it, it is crazy. absolutely amazing. It, it looks so so real. I mean, you, you you look at like corners of like you, you know, sometimes like up in the corner, corner you can see a ceiling of like it looks like it's an old house, like the realistic type looking thing. But, but like, went with went with went with the whole whole thing. Thing as itself, so it was like for for the most part, it is one big like round run through. But, but like at the end, the the thing is, it's like, it's like there are specific things you, you got to do to figure out that puzzle. So I was like, the, the, the first thing and the last thing have been figured out, but, but like the second thing, thing to, uh, it's like you, you, get, you gotta get, get like three, three baby lefts you know, to unlock the uh, door or whatever. But like, um, the, the second puzzle or, or like way you, you get the second baby left is like still unknown. And so I was like, the whole thing is basically one big troll. 
team by Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's good with that stuff. I, I don't know yeah. if that's like if that's his signature mark or something, but I mean, I mean yeah, Kojima knows how to troll. What what an appropriate game for Kojima, right? So. Yeah, the game. If the final product is representative of the teaser, that is definitely going to be a contender for game of the year when it launches. I it's, believe it will graphically, but gameplay wise, it is said it has like nothing to do with the game. I, I think it's just the. Uh, I mean, it's a tech demo, right? This is just a tech graphics. demo, yeah. right? Just to show off the box engine, but the game itself, just the teaser, was so creepy and it was, it was so imaginative and so creative and so realistic at the same time. It just all the elements came together so well and just however, however long it takes someone to get through that. This is gonna be a trial. version of Outlast. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where the full game is similar to that, only bigger in scope, and it's better, and it's more detailed, when the story is richer. Like, that's... This oh, is, my God. Like, wow. This is what PS4 has in store, then. What? Yeah. And that's not even exclusive title, so it's not like they're getting the full, like, you know, dev kits. They're... they're, they're dude. Oh, my goodness. Dude. I don't want to spend too much time on this, because I know we got to move on, but, dude, this game mm-hmm. is going to be something crazy. It's going to be something so imaginative, something so different. And it's going to bring back Silent Hill, because Silent Hill has been dead for a few, you know, man. And they just need some, they need some big. Right. Definitely, yeah. So, I think we're all looking forward to that game, at least learning more about it, seeing more about it. But now jumping over to Microsoft's conference real quick. Uh, what do we all think about the Xbox conference? Let's start with... <sighs> Can I start, please? please yeah. Please. <laughs> like, all right, you please get it out of the way, bro. All right, my my son very much conference. I watched it. I fell asleep. <laughs> That's it. No, um, but, 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 but like I, I did fall, fall asleep during it. It's like I don't care about my stuff. But, but like the, the the only one thing that like kind of caught my attention was the exclusive thing, thing about Tomb Raider. But that's kind of dead right now because um Phil, Phil Spencer con- confirmed it's on it's already a uh, time exclusive. Uh, so so like well, whenever that when, uh, whenever that duration is over. Scoring news can do as they please, and I would I would not be surprised if what if like that they like uh, bring it to to the PS4 and so it's like Rise of the Tomb Tomb Raider definitive edition. <laughs> <laughs> I that, that would be <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> oh no! Mm-hmm. All right, Hassan, um, um, drunk. To, to me, um, dude, <sighs> I have to get my thoughts together. Or if you would you mind running down um uh, real quick some things that happened at the Microsoft conference. It's just like real quick, because I think I remember what happened, but my initial thought re- reaction to Microsoft's uh, Gamescom is um, I didn't really care for anything. Like, n- nothing they showed. It's kind of like, you know, literally like a continuation for E3. A lot of games I'm not interested in. And when I mean, I also want to clarify like the E3 podcast. When I give something a score, it's only because of me. I'm not judging it for everyone else out there who might like the game and might love it, because that's just dumb. If you're going to review something, you're going to judge them. It's for yourself and for right. yourself only. So for the Gamescom, I'm judging it the exact same way. Nothing they showed interested me. I don't care about Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter, even though I will say this. At Gamescom, it was hilarious. They had this thing, right, where it was, uh, I think this is the most memorable thing about Gamescom is that they were, like, doing these, like, developer, like, you know, like, get, they get up on stage and they make a bunch of, you know, dumb jokes and everyone has to pretend to laugh. The company sends out people in the crowd to act like they clap and applaud. All this weird shit. So they have the Advanced Warfighter guys out there, Sledgehammer, I think, and they have this, like, live tweet, like, feed at the bottom of their, um, of their uh, conference going on. And they're like, hey, make sure you keep sending us those uh, Call of Duty, uh, hashtag Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter MP re- reveal, and we'll put your tweets up on the screen. Oh, bro. And usually they have, like, a filter for, like, a lot of tweets, because people <laughs> just send in, like, oh, yeah, you got some pics, you know, all this other shit, right? right? And one got through, uh, one, like, obscene tweet got through, and it was showed up on, like, the screen, and I think it was, like, Hey, can you guys keep it down? I'm trying to fuck with my sister. <laughs> and everyone in the crowd started dying laughing. Everyone in the crowd just started going off. But the yeah. thing is, the yeah. development was so that. stupid. And yeah. he was just like, oh, you like that, huh? All right, we're having fun tonight. I was just like, like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, no like, yeah, he had no idea. Like, he made some stupid joke, where it was like, it was like, um, 
All right, and if you like if you like new canon, then wait you see this new new canon, and everyone's like, <laughs> I get laughing at, at, at the tweet. But he's yeah. like, oh, you like that joke, huh? <laughs> We're having some fun tonight. I was like, oh hell no, <laughs> hell no, no, nah, dude. This is like a soft conference. Overall, I didn't really care for much. Uh, in closing, didn't really care for much. Nothing there for me. Uh, the definitive collection, that is nothing to me. That's a time exclusive for one year. They have a contract. Time exclusives aren't exclusives because it's only for a certain amount of time. So congratulations on them getting a year early. But the thing is, Uncharted is coming out next, next year, so that game is irrelevant to me. And um, basically, yeah, man, that's it for my Microsoft thoughts. I think everyone's thoughts are going to be quick and sweet on these. No, no one really cares mm-hmm. about the conference. But uh, other than the field. Of course. So, um, you know, <laughs> sons, I'm, a I'm sorry, I'm passing to you. Me? Well, uh, I've only got a couple things to say about the Microsoft conference. One, I think it was really early in the morning, and two, I didn't watch it, so I um, don't really care. I, I watched it on the, I watched it on the Facebook feed. <laughs> I watched I saw the highlights there, which was probably like two highlights. I think it was um, Lauren Kraft and uh, the Twitter Call of Duty, Keep It Down, I'm trying to do my sister. And that's it. Like, I mean, that, to me, that was like the biggest highlight. Um, I I think the Call of Duty one's the best one because of that. Too. Yeah, dude. Props. What's his, what's his name? What was his name? Dude, I, have to, yeah. dude, I don't know the guy's name. I have the picture saved on my uh, phone. Damn. But, this moment, how, how, but, can, how can you forget that name? Like, dude, he was just like, <laughs> um, um, dude, the name. if you like new canon, then you're gonna love this new new canon that we have. It's an attachment for your game. <laughs> Everyone's like, <laughs> looking at like the screen. He's like, oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> we'll be here all night. I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, I think yeah, that's, that's probably my, my highlight, my favorite part. I think Orpheus was anything worthy of, like, talking about. Yeah. Well, I have a few things. Uh, not too many. Microsoft bringing Xbox One to 29 new markets around the world. Good for them. They're finally getting some more systems out there. But I want to see them start to report sales numbers. I don't want to get them to say, like, all right, we've shipped to 29 new territories, so now we've shipped, like, 10 million units globally, you know, sitting on store shelves, collecting dust. Like, the 5 million is still there in the U.S. Yes. You know, I'm just saying, if you're going to start pushing your <laughs> other markets, congratulations to you, you know, good going, but don't just keep reporting. I'm going to be honest, Orvio, saying that you've only shipped and counting it as sales is like counting every woman in the world as saying, I could have possible girlfriends, I just haven't done it yet. It's like... It's like counting every girl in the world that you've it never is. dated as, as like a possible girlfriend. Like, no, you don't have that many possible girlfriends, bro. Stop it. it well, it's theoretically possible, so, you know, no. <laughs> like, theoretically, I could sleep with every single one of those women out there. I just haven't done it yet. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I like the Super High. That was uh, an indie game, I believe, that's coming first to Xbox One, uh, where time moves only when you do. I thought that was really neat. It's like a first-person game. It looks like a shooter. Uh, they showed a, a part of the scene that I thought looked really cool where your guy drops down and he faces like three enemies and they start shooting at you while you're running and you just stop running. And when you stop, the bullets like freeze. And then you sort of strafe to the right and then as you move, the bullets start moving, your enemies start moving again, but they only move as fast as you do, except for the bullets, which makes sense because, you know, bullets move faster than people. And you can try to react to that. So I thought that was a really neat concept. I'm actually more interested in that sort of time altering game than I am Microsoft's actual uh, quantum break time altering game which is supposed to be like their bigger uh, AAA exclusive coming out. Also uh, the Halo channel props to Microsoft. Oh I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. The Halo <laughs> channel is a, a huge, huge thing for them. Tons and that tons of people beautiful. love Halo. Yes mm-hmm. people buy Xboxes because of Halo alone. And mm-hmm. the fact that they have so much content, it's such a rich universe from the novels to the games to the, like, well, live action ish movies. Not really movies. There's a but, movie you know, coming out. Saying, God's right, there's a movie coming out. There's a TV series. There's such a wealth of content out there that they can actually make their own TV channel exclusive to their service, and people can just get on there and watch it and 
you know, props to them for milking it for all it's worth because it is their flagship franchise and it seems like they know how to use it to its utmost. Yeah, so. mm-hmm. And aside from that, the only other thing that I found curious is that Halo, not said not Halo, but that Xbox has three bundles coming out. They announced the one terabyte Call of Duty bundle, which Call of Duty people might like that, especially that it has a one terabyte hard drive. They have the White Sunset Overdrive bundle coming out, and they have uh, one more bundle. I forget which which game it was. Call of Duty. Right now. No, I, I mentioned that one. The Call of Duty one terabyte, the Sunset Overdrive, and then there was Halo. No, they didn't say about. They didn't say a Halo bundle. That's what was curious. I know there was one other bundle. There was a third bundle. But, um, oh, it was the FIFA 15 bundle. That's what it was. That was coming out in Europe, and it might come elsewhere. But the one thing that I didn't understand is Halo Master Chief Collection is such a massive game, and it's dropping this holiday. Uh, why why no bundle? Like, I know when Halo 5 rolls out, that's probably going to have a bundle. But the Master Chief Collection, like, how can you... Like, I can understand Call of Duty having a bundle, because it's Call of Duty. I can understand FIFA having a bundle with Europe and the rest of the world because soccer is just a huge, huge sport. But Sunset Overdrive? You're going to give Sunset Overdrive, a new IP, a bundle, but you're not going to give Halo, the Master Chief Collection, a bundle? Why? Like, people are going to buy a system... I mean, yeah, those games have been on older platforms before, but 2 has been remastered, and that's a huge value. Four games... I. I, I don't know. I just I don't see why they just didn't do it. I think it would have sold even if they just threw it in with the box with an unskinned console and just said here, you know, we're gonna shave like twenty bucks off the price of the if you bought like both separately. People would hop on that. So I think that's a missed opportunity. But um, yeah. Aside from that, the only other thing that really caught my attention, which caught everyone's attention, was a uh, Tomb Raider. Um, you know, we've already talked about that, and even. Even though it's been announced that it's only a timed exclusive, it still irks a lot of people because it, it was announced originally as a multi-platform title. Now it's like Microsoft is taking it away. Not permanently, just temporarily. But it still pisses off a lot of people. And as someone who was looking forward to playing that game eventually, uh, I confess to being a little irked by that too. You know, it's not, it's not right. And I could go on about the differences between business behaviors between Microsoft and Sony, but that's a topic for another show. But I hope Microsoft does not keep repeating that kind of behavior. Uh, especially, you know, I mean, even the previous game to Rise of the Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider... Oh, I forgot the exact... Actually, I think it was just called Tomb Raider, the first one. And uh, the remaster. Yeah. So, and that was multi-platform. Right, that was on every platform. So to take the sequel and just make it exclusive to one system, even if it's just timed, it's kind of like, oh, uh, like, that doesn't feel right. Like, that feels greasy. That's, that's the messed up thing to do. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't get repeated in the future. But uh, speaking of Tomb Raider and its first iteration and its remaster onto uh, next-gen systems, onto PS4 and Xbox One, how does everyone feel about remasters in general? I've been waiting for this question, man. Uh, uh, remaster, the theory behind a remaster is so beautiful, it's so tender, and you love it because you're like, oh man, any game that I love could get remade and put back on the system. Final uh, Fantasy Seven, maybe one day. You know, we we've seen the likes of, or at least for PlayStation, PlayStation has run remasters into the ground with um. <laughs> Sly Cooper, God of War, God, God of War, Colossus. remasters every freaking month. Like, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> they got a remaster. Ico got a remaster. Ratchet and Clank got a remaster collection. And they're at a great value. Don't not get me wrong. But in, I think it's different from what Sony's doing now is that remasters are becoming too normal. And I don't want this to become a normal thing for developers when they run out of ideas. I think that's really corny. Um, we're getting a Resident Evil remaster, uh, and I think we're getting a few more. We're getting a Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts remaster again, part 2.5, part 2 is coming out. Um, we're getting G- GTA, which really isn't a remaster. Uh, you know, real quick, just real quick, on, on the topic of GTA, this is my theory, I'm going to leave it at this. GTA, when it comes to the heist, they were never going to release heist for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. They were never going to do it. They have planned this out from the beginning. They they knew that people wanted it on, G- on a P- PS4, Xbox One, 
and a PC. So they were like, you know what, just save it for for the PCs and the Xbox One and PS4. We can get more value. That's my theory. I'm sticking to that. But um, you know, all these remasters, man. When it comes to remasters, like 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 I said, in theory, it's so great. Like, oh, Resident Evil's coming back. I, I used to love that game. But when it becomes too normal. And everyone's like, oh, we need this game remastered. I want this game remastered. I think that, I think that's kind of problematic. Because, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me. But when you're, when a studio is too busy focusing on a remaster, or have studios focus on, on a remaster, then you're basically just rehashing old stuff. And you're not making new waves in the new generation. You're, you know, like, I wouldn't want a Jack Collector, even though I'm pretty sure I already have one. I'm not really up, up on that. I wouldn't want Naughty Dog to spend months or a few days even working on a Jack Collection. I want them to put all their manpower into an Uncharted 4, a new IP, and The Last of Us 2. I, I don't want a uh, Jack Collection. That had its era. Let those games live in infamy forever. There's no time with all the resources and all the creative, all the creative people out there. There's no reason for us as gamers to keep wanting these rematches. If they come, that's great. But it has to be something like completely amazing. Like a remaster slash remake that is amazing is a Halo collection. That is absolutely ridiculous. The value of sixty bucks for all that, I think it's sixty bucks at least. And those four games, one, two, three, and four, completely remade top to bottom new multiplayer and every single one has the multiplayer rules of Halo 2 which is considered the best multiplayer and also one of the best multiplayer games of all time hands down easily I think that's an amazing value but when you get like um, you know like a freaking Resident Evil and even though like Capcom is dying of thirst they have nothing to dish out other than Street Fighter they They got no money bro they can't, they can't be making games. They're, they're making a remake hoping that it's going to And that's so, sad. It's just like, they just Remakes don't cost that much to make. So. Yeah, man. Like, they just think that, oh, I'm gonna, let's go rehash this and, like, see if we can get, get some cash off it. Go that's so bullshit. It seems, it seems so cheap. So, you know, I guess you could say in shorter terms, how I feel about remasters is this. If it doesn't take away from the creativity of a new game, I'm cool with it. I don't, I don't, I'm not begging for them. I don't really like, you know, want them that bad. But if it's for a game that was so iconic that it deserves to have its second life again, like a, like if Final Fantasy VII came out and like Square Enix said, we are remaking top to bottom Final Fantasy VII for PS4 and Xbox One, I'm buying that day one. Like I'm buying that day one because it's, a, it's an iconic game. I don't need a Banjo Kazooie collection. I don't need a Conquer collection. I don't need a Mario Cook collection. I don't need like a freaking at this point. I don't need a Jack Cook collection. I don't need that. It's great that if you have it, that's cool. But I'm not gonna be on people's sites and the forums. Oh, we need this game. Come back. No, we don't. We need more games because I'm telling you, as gamers, we all need to stand up and realize that these companies out here are, are jipping us for our money, and we deserve so much better, which is why you have to support the new IPs and support games that are trying to do something different. Fuck indies, but that's just my point of view. So I'm going to pass it on to uh, Gamer 316. And, uh, how does he feel about remasters? Yeah. I, I am actually very, very opinionated about, about this, but, but like, I can see, see points from like both the uh, developer and consumer. It's like, well, well, with like, uh, well, 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 with remasters in, in a whole, I can understand some why why uh, developers and man making them to judge just to, to like yeah, give a little little bit of extra money for uh, whatever they're, they're working on for you know current gen. But but like uh, uh, one 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 of the big big brand breaks I have about, about it is like the the whole prior pricing issue. It's like, it's like they're 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 bringing, they're bringing out these games that that like were like released like a year ago for full price again. It's like, it's like you're you're paying 120 bucks for one game within a year. It's like that's that's just wrong and that's like I don't know highway robbery to me. Uh, but like uh, there there are some some games that that are kind of kind of exceptional. It's like, it's like games like the the last one that that just came out like what a month ago. Uh, so it's like. That that is so highly highly regarded, uh, and like it's gotten some some again giving your your words and what what not. So I was like, I can understand some some people want wanting to, to like buy buy it again, 
for me, I never bought on the PS3, and it's like, I bought, bought on the PS4, and it's like, it wasn't even full price there, they took 10 bucks off the end, it was and, uh, but I, I also, I also bought a Tomb Raider on the PS3, I bought the, uh, D Definitive Edition for, for PS4, but I didn't pay for a full price for that, there, there was a sale on a PlayStation Plus where I bought it for, like, 30 bucks, so I was like, I am not going to pay full, full price for, you know, a game that I played, played a year ago, again, but because it, you don't have the same experience as when you play, play through a game for the first time. Uh, one exception I am going to make is for a GTA because I feel, I feel like the GTA will, will like run less while they keep on patching and like adding more and more things. And so I was like, also arguing with, with, with terms of it, went, went with the heist and so I was like, I, I think heists were, were, were like a big issue for, for Rockstar and so I was like, I'm pretty, pretty sure at this point the, they'll release heist with the next gen or PS4, Xbox One, whatever, uh, for a version since then, and it's, it's like, that, that, that's when, when they're ready, then, then they'll patch it into last-gen systems, but, uh, over, overall, when, 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 with, like, uh, remasters, so it's like, one, one game, I kind of, kind of, think, think, think it's wrong, especially at all full price, but, but like, the, the, there's also, like, uh, the collections of one, and so it's, like, so, several games that, that are, like, uh, upscaled to like 720, 10, 1080, whatever, and so I was like the frame rates improved, improved. It's like those are several games in one bundle for one price. That is also a pretty, pretty good deal. There, there, there was also an, another thing went with like you know the the God of War series. Uh, see, well, like that 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 they re re remastered the games for for the PS3. Then, then they remastered the PSP versions, then they ported them down to, to the Vita. It's like, that's a problem, I think. It's like, that's like way too much for one game. So I was like, you're, you're buying it three times over. It's like, do it once yeah. on like, you know, the, 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 the PS3 and it's like, like that, that's fine, okay? Uh, but that because it's like, it's like, once they fall, port it down, down on the Vita, it's like, it's like that, that's like a grand, grand and all, bro. But like, I think you're, you're getting a lesser version of like what you paid on the, the uh, PS3 because I played some games was it? it's like Doki Doki Universe. That's a crowd cross by game. Uh, and so it's like it runs amazingly on the PS4 4 And so it's like I play it, play it on the Vita. It's like the frame rate is absolutely horrible. I could not play it on the Vita at all. <laughs> but, 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 but like I also wish they didn't they would do more cross by options or like you know pay like ten bucks to upgrade. You know something like that. Stop ripping us off for like full price. That's yeah, a good but, idea. Yo, like, that's a really good idea, because, you know, I feel you on that, man. I know this is about to give you something else to turn, but before you go on, um, you know, you brought a really good, good, good point that I really do agree with. I think that when it comes to the topic of remasters, I think that developers just sit back and they think, how can we screw the consumer over again and port this down, let's let's cross by this but let's charge 60 bucks for it when we've already played this game oh you know what i my stance on single player only games is that they should be 40 bucks so you damn sure i'm telling you that remasters should be way less it should be 30 bucks there's no reason i'm paying you for a remaster i mean all you do is go and retouch the pixels up a little bit you might put in some new code to put in like an extra vase that can be broken or something Unless you're doing a remake, unless you're doing an absolute remake where you put time and effort into this, I don't want it. Which is why I'm saying I want remakes. Here's my thing. I want remakes. I don't want remasters. I want remakes. I want Halo, you, you're about to spoil everyone. I don't care. I want remakes. Remake Final Fantasy VII, man. That's what I want. <clears throat> yeah, like, uh, can, 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 continuing on a little, little bit, uh, two, two last things. So I was like, what, 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 what the, the last bus it was dropped, dropped down by like 10 bucks. And it's like that, they did include like all the data DLC up to date. Well, but, but like, still, so it's like that, they did drop the price down a little bit, so it's not, not, not full price. And it's like, the, the, the value with the PS4 4 version, the remastered version, so as like, that's worth more than getting the PS3 version now and then buying all the DLC. And, and, and also, well, with a square, square Enix forever now, they're, they're bringing back uh, what, one of the Sleep, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, well, whatever, and slams so like, that, that is not worth 60 bucks at all if they sell it for 60 bucks. Uh, I mean, so I was like, I, I, I played that game because it was free, free on PS Plus, but I am not 
it's like buying that game at full, full price, even though I played it for free. It's just not worth it. If they, uh, if they have a sale for, for like 30 bucks, uh, like they did with Tomb Tum- Raider, then I'll pro- probably consider it. But by, but uh, buying it at full price, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, that's all that's on my mind for, for remasters. So I'll give it to Jim. Alright, so uh, my thoughts on remasters and remakes and all that mumbo jumbo. So basically, uh, I was thinking about this and some games you don't want to remake necessarily because, I mean, if it's such an iconic game like, let's say, Final Fantasy VII, then one, you don't really want to remake it because people played it because they're like, hey, I really like this game. And the reason you would really only remaster it and maybe add, like, a couple of things to it is because, one, it was on, like, PS1, I think, and basically, if you upgrade the graphics for all of that, then, yeah, that's great, because it was on the PS1 and the graphics aren't that great compared to nowadays, so if you remastered that and then you sold it again I wouldn't necessarily have a problem paying like $50 for it maybe probably like $40 and I'd definitely buy it but for more modern games like sleeping dogs and you know stuff like that personally that's one of the few games that I actually platinumed so I mean if you're gonna do that then i don't see the point in buying it again because I still have the game like sitting right in front of me and I platinumed the game so I've literally done everything there is to do in the game and I bought all the story DLC as well so I mean it's kind of like well I have no reason to buy the game but somebody else might want to play the game like uh, bring up Ventura again, he was asking me about it, he's like, oh yeah, you flattened that game, didn't you? I was like, yeah. He's like, did you like it? Yeah, like, it was a good game. He's like, oh, well, I'm thinking about buying it, because I never actually bought it before. And a few days later, like, oh, well, we're releasing this game on PS4 for, you know, whatever. But if they added in all the DLC like they did with The Last of Us, then... I don't really see a problem with it. Some of that DLC costs like 10, maybe $15, and if you include everything, then you'd probably definitely get your money's worth from it. So... They they, they actually are doing that with Sleeping Dogs, though. Ah, well that makes sense then. But, I mean, if it's a game, like I say, from like two or three generations ago, console wise then i can see how you know if lots of people would actually buy it or if lots of people actually really like it then i can understand that like uh the dot hack series if you go to google and type in dot hack series ps1 ps2 it's nearly impossible to find and i think there was one guy my friend told me he was Selling it for like $150 for like all seven games. And he was like, I would totally buy that if I had money, but he didn't. So, I mean, if you release games like that on to a later generation, then that makes sense. But if it's a game that came out like a year ago, then I'm probably not going to be interested in it. Just because it came out last year and I can go buy it. Let go. Here's a game. It's you, so I'll buy it, I'll play it, and then I'll let it sit there. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much my thoughts on well, Let me ask you a quick game. question about something you said earlier. So, <laughs> if Final Fantasy VII were remastered for the PS4, you wouldn't want it? No, I would. I would definitely buy it. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how much I would play it, but just be like, oh, look, I have an actual I'll I'll disc copy. Yeah. Dude, like, I'll y'all get a lot. Like, like, certain games... Game. If it was re, uh, first off, this is this is in like a perfect world where it was remade with perfect care, wasn't rushed out, that took time on it, kind of like how the Halo Collection is. Um, if they did that, 
then I see no reason why not to buy if they put the same amount of care into it. Yeah. But the thing is, would games like those even like translate into like you know the amount of like gigs that they could do like for the things that come out? Like dude, I think that you know I know I've already talked. Story. You know, do one of these like re- these topics are really interesting to me because I think that sometimes it's kind of like hollow ground. I mean, it's kind of like hollow ground where it's like. You don't need to go certain places. You don't need to remake, you know, Sleeping Dogs because Sleeping Dogs was, wasn't even a hit to begin with. So why are you remaking it? Why don't, Square Enix, why don't you go that's work on that deep down game that we're supposed to be getting for PS4, ass. hopefully that's a TGS, and and then work on that. Don't work on a freaking that's Sleeping Dogs. Like, uh, I don't know that, but Sleeping Dogs was, uh, was multi-platform, so though, like, you can try yeah, it like, like it comes across as greedy to me when all of these companies mm-hmm. like, oh, well, let's go in and remake this. It's like basically like to me, the equivalent of a remaster is like going on like a tour for like one of your favorite artists, whether it be whatever genre. And all they do is replay their old hits, not 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 the new ones from their album where like their new shit It's like, OK, here we have. Hey, remember this song? I didn't come here to listen to just this album. I came here to listen to your new stuff. That's what it feels like to me. It's just like, hey, remember when when, when we did this a, a year ago? Yeah, we're gonna bring it back and charge you the same. It's like, like you're being a dick. Like I don't like that shit, man. <laughs> I think if it's done right, it's done correctly, then great. But it's not being done correctly. People are just mastering everything now. I bet you. I bet you. I promise you. I promise you that there will be a Splinter Cell collection coming out soon. I, I, I just have the feeling I know that they're going to do it. I know they're going to have a Mass Effect collection too. I know it. I just know these games are going to get remade. It's going to be annoying. They already had a Mass Effect uh, collection on the PS3 and 360. And Steam. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, I'm, I'm talking about the PS4 for the 8th gen. <laughs> yeah, my friend has literally bought like every like iteration of the Mass Effect series. And so much so that I think they actually gave him the newest one for free. So like, hey, you really like this game. Uh, here's a code, and you can get this for free. He's like, oh, well, I was going to buy it anyway, so, okay. What do you think, son? That's hardcore. <clears throat> Alright, uh, HD remakes. Or ports, or, I don't know, remakes. Uh, yeah, uh, what I on. think about them, alright, uh, this is my two cents on them. Um, I, I don't hate them. I, I think it's, I actually like them. Uh, why? Uh, well, the thing is, you're looking at, uh, and this is, this is where an exception, where it will make sense, where these remakes would make sense, right? And what, what I mean is that, Tron's brought up a good point, is like, yeah, multi getting remakes this doesn't make sense, because unless, like, you're, you're targeting a very, 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 very small audience by doing that. You're only targeting the audience that never owned the game, period, and never owned the past console. They're just buying, you know, they're buying, uh, this is their first console. PS4 is their first console ever. That's all, they're, they're, they're targeting that audience. Small. It makes sense for an exclusive game like The Last of Us, because a lot of people are jumping mm-hmm. from the 360 onto the PS4. They never owned the PS3, and here's their chance to play one of the greatest award-winning games. An award-winning game. More, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about, like, not just a couple. I mean, I'm talking about a freaking load full of awards. All right? It was 200 Game of the Year awards. Yeah, dude, <laughs> come on. That deserves game, That deserves a remake. When you have that kind of, like, attention, all right, like, you have to have, like, these are games where are expected to have a remake. But when you have, like, you know, I mean, I think it's unnecessary because if you go ahead and release a game that's already been it's already been played, so whatever, it's no point. You're targeting a very small audience. I don't know. I think they're just trying to bank in as much money as they can. You know, whatever. So let's just reap off their leftovers. They still got leftovers. I mean, we're going to go ahead and charge you full price for leftovers. I don't know. I see it like that. Um, you know, but anyways, to me, like, for some stuff, it's appropriate. For other stuff, I think it's unnecessary. Uh, but exclusives, definitely. Because, I mean, you're looking at, you know, especially for the PS4, because this is now the, I mean, this has the bigger install base now. I mean, we have, you know, we got gamers from Nintendo, we got gamers from the Xbox, and we got the gamers from the OUYA, 
and you know, whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, Game anyway, <laughs> and all <laughs> yeah. And you got you got gamers that own the system before. You got gamers that never owned the, a console. They only own handhelds. They're you know promoting themselves to uh, the TV now. And I mean, you know, you got you got that going on. And games like, I mean, you got games like, I mean, The Last of Us. You know, you got remakes on the past systems, like PS3, like Shadow Colossus. See, those are games that need to be played. I mean, I, I mean, they need to be experienced. And I know, like, I mean, those games are really tough to find. You know, on their, uh, I mean, uh, on their, uh, on the predecessors. But you know, now here's your chance. You know, to go ahead and, you know, witness that masterpiece once again. And uh, not only that, you're witnessing it on, you know, on vibrant graphics, like completely, like, I mean, outstanding visuals. You're going to see, like, the power of the PS, you know, the PS4 on this, on, on this game. So, I mean, I think it's good. I mean, I have, I have no, like, nothing against, you know, remastered versions unless, you know, I mean, unless they, I feel that they should deserve it. Uh, to, to be honest, the, uh, you know, for me, the, uh, what was it called, Laura Croft game? I don't know. Okay. The Tomb Raider game, I mean, if that was going to be remade, I mean, and then going in a direction, and now the fan base is on Xbox, like, they, I mean, they, well, the fan base is multi platform to begin with. Now they're switching it, but that was, like, the last conversation we had. I don't know, that, I think that was completely pointless to release that definitive edition, and then just to say, hey, well, you got into this series, now guess what, you know, you're going to be late into continuing it. So at least it's temporary. But as for you know, as a company professionally working with the fans, I don't think fans are gonna be too happy with that, and they're gonna lose like support because of that. I mean, you don't get people hyped up into a series, and then you're like, oh yeah, but guess what? Like we're gonna tease you like dirty style. Like you ain't gonna get, the, you ain't gonna play this game for like a year, you know. So if you got into it, sorry, we're sorry, <laughs> sorry. You know, I mean, I don't know, man. I I I I, I can't help but think of that like from a company point of view like when something like that happens and for me this is why I, you know i have a big appreciation for first party support because i know they they don't do that like i mean i mean sometimes it does with some with some second party developers <coughs> it's a theory <coughs> i'm sorry man but it's a heavenly sword man i really want to see some successors yeah thank you thank you so kind of but i mean i, I would have loved to see some continuations of some games but whatever you know it's all good but on the on the topic of hd remakes uh i have nothing i have nothing against them i have i i like them i own i actually own a few hd remakes myself and you know uh, i think it, they're great um would i like to see some more uh, there are some certain games i would like to see but uh you know again final fantasy 7 since brought it up it, i mean it's something that like i mean through the Square Enix admitted it themselves, you know, like, we would love to, you know, bring out a Final Fantasy VII game, but, like, they just don't have, they don't have the minds to do it right now. They don't. Like, the original minds that did Seven, those, 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 those geniuses, they're not there anymore, man. I mean, they all retired, they moved on to the next thing, they all went on to new stuff, and, like, it's mm -hmm. new guys. All, like, their whole team is made up, and same as Capcom, you know, all those Except original geniuses. Yeah, I mean, they got the, Kira, yeah. or the other guy. Yeah, the, the guy who's now in charge of uh, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, He's yeah. the only one that's still there. That was a big man that worked on 7. So, yeah, and, you know, but that's, like, the original, like, the original, like, the original vision of what 7 is, you know, to try, like, everything, the imagination that was in their minds during the time they were creating that game, you know, all of those individuals that were there, like, putting their piece to the puzzle, they're not going to be there to, you know, those minds are not going to be there for the next. So if they're going to try to remake it, you know, to me, it's like the only way I would see an appropriate way to redo 7, all right? And a lot of people, like, I think a lot of people take it out of, you know, they're actually blowing it up. I mean, they're expecting 7 to be, like, completely open world with, like, you know, next-gen graphics, full 3D and third-person view. I can move the camera everywhere. You know, if you're expecting something like that, that's probably the size of how 7 is. That is going to be completely unlikely to ever exist. Something like that. Because 7 was such a huge game. I mean, they could barely... I mean, so for them to do what they did on a PlayStation, on a CD, it took actually, what, like three CDs? Yeah, that that is something that I don't think we're ever going to see in next gen. So, 
But if they were to create a high res, like I actually kind of like high res everything, like the, the environment, but keep the gameplay exactly how it was. You know, not like a camera we can look around. It's 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 gonna be like third person. You know, like top top down view, kind of like how Seven was, where it's like a pre rendered background. It's and it's kind of it's just kind of like, like kind of like a static background, but it's like high res. Keep everything exactly the same. Keep everything. I mean, have everything HD. You get me the same static background, but like HD version of it. Have you know an HD version of like a cheapy version of clouds walking around, and then when it goes into the battle mode, it's not like you know, it's like the actual proportionate version of Cloud. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if they want, you know, fans want, but I mean, if they're going to create something like that, a, a pure, like, respected HD version of Final Fantasy VII, I want them to create the exact, like, a carbon copy of exactly what Seven was. I mean, even for, I mean, don't even, like, keep the text exactly the same, written. I mean, just fix <laughs> the, you know, the typos and stuff. But, like, everything else, just keep everything exactly the same, you know, to what the, that game was. Don't don't try to reimagine the game. I don't want a reimagined version of 7. Seven's a masterpiece. Don't reimagine it. Just bring that into a high-res version, an HD version. Like, mm-hmm. every single scene, every single, every single like, area you, you explore, every single, you know, I mean, even the, the world, everything. Just an HD version of it, but, again, keep it to how it was made. Don't try to reinvent it. You know, just keep that static background, like how they had it before. You know, when you go into like some parts of the cities and some parts of the towns, the backgrounds are static. They're not real, actual 3D. You know, polygon backgrounds. You know, yeah, they're they're CGI backgrounds, but they're stills. And then you know, cloud is running around in those backgrounds. You know, in a in an in invisible 3D space with that background in there. And I mean, I think that's what they should do. You know, I I think that they're over. They're over, you know, analyzing, oh, that, you know, maybe the fans want a third-person view. No, man. If you were to make an exact HD version of Final Fantasy VII, I think that is, that's even better than making a third-person view, the camera scrolling behind you, looking around and shit. I mean, honestly, like, if you have that going around, I think that's going to take away from what Seven was. And there's no way in hell you're going to actually be able to fit that entire game. Like seven, and put all of that into a single disc. Because seven was freaking huge, bro. That was a extremely lengthy game. I mean, that that was yeah. a game that had games within it. That had games within the game. <laughs> all right, how freaky was that for a PS1 game? A game that has games within it. That's some crazy stuff, bro. And that's like mad props. I mean, still to this day, like I can go back on seven, and I'm still impressed. I'm like, dude, I don't know how they pulled this off. See, you what know? you're describing is that's the way remasters should be done. Yeah. Like where you keep the spirit of the game and you try to see what the original game focused on the story a remaster the, not a remake the way the art style is right yeah. so like with seven specifically because there's a lot of passionate fans who love seven that have played it mm. when you walk into some of those towns into calm town or into midgar into the slums or into uh, junon or coast of del sol there's a reason why the camera isn't focused in on a cloud like it is in the very first sequence when he hops off the train. It's because, yes, cloud is the star, but the environments, the backdrops, the scenery, all of that plays an integral role into your appreciation of the game. So in that instance, you really want to recapture that. You really don't want the camera behind him and just above the shoulder like an on for You preserve that emotion. When right, you, you want to preserve as experience. much as you can about the original experience, but just try to make it visually more appealing and perhaps, you know, make the, the soundtrack nicer. Not, don't add new songs, Clear. but, you know... Same um, songs, the same exact songs, but just, right, you know, like... Clearer. They're, they're going to be much more clear, exactly, more refined, uh, you know, and if they want to add in the voice acting, they can. I mean, there's going to be a lot of talking, but... Oh, uh, no, I don't know about that. That's, that's pushing, that's pushing that's a lot. I think I think maybe just for the CGI cutscenes, put the voice acting, but everything else have it type kind of traditional RPGs. You know, I would like I would to see that. That's yeah, yeah. so keep Final Fantasy like, like Final Fantasy X, like Final Fantasy X. You know how it was, but like I think seven. I don't. I don't think seven should be like, because I mean, Square Enix is, They don't not have the skills to go ahead and pull that off. I'm sorry, they don't. If they're gonna try to like re envision everything, that new version of seven. Is not going to deliver the same. You're not going to have that same impact message that you got from the PS1 version. It's probably going to be a completely different message in the end. And 
you know, people aren't are going to think of seven. They're going to just refer to the latest installment or the latest game that came out. Like, yeah, this game was whatever. You know, it was okay. You know, a lot of games today are just like that. You know, that I way. Want, it's just I, another I, game. I'd rather remakes yeah. than remasters. I'm gonna be honest. Um, or remakes than remakes. Yeah, I I don't want to spend too much I, more time talking about problems. it. But dude, my my distaste for what remastered has become is yeah. a little bit strong, and I think that remakes. Remakes meaning that you don't have to, you know, a remake means to me that you just remake it and you just redo the entire thing and, you know, you just basically build it, not from the ground up, but build what you did. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a, a, a remake to that to me is kind of like kind of how they made MGS1 from the PAPS1 to the GameCube. The a so remake, okay. yeah. A remake to me is like the Halo, co- yeah. the Halo yeah. collection is being completely remade. <laughs> Into oh, a modern day good. game for yeah. Xbox One, like they're redoing the entire graphics, but it's still gonna be the same story to the same voice actors. Everyone's gonna come back and do all four games. Well, I think you know, for at least one, two, and three, four is really already remade. You know, well, not remade, it's already made uh, in this in this era. So you know, um, do I want remakes over remasters? I would prefer that. I would yeah. definitely prefer that because you know, like. If God of War, and I hate to say this because I hate the remakes, I'm being a remaster, but if God of War said we're remaking 1 and 2, I'd buy it. I'd fucking buy it because if they remade him, like they remade they did like an entire ground up remake of graphics, character design, voice acting, and they just redid everything, oh my god, dude, I would have the perfect like, well, trilogy. For God of War, is, I mean, it's fine because, I mean, that. It's not that far back. You get me? I mean, it's not that far back. Well, I mean, I'm not just it's being still, It's still fairly... Like, it, it, yeah, like, if you have games... If you have games that, like, 7... I mean, that that game is 8. Big I mean, time. I so 7's a whole year. Rem- yeah, if you, put a, if you put a remastered version, I mean, that would be such a huge leap. And it won't even be all that expensive to do. Not as expensive as a re- being remade, like, from scratch. Like, just remake everything. And that's gonna be extremely expensive. I don't even think Square Enix is like. I mean, they even have the money nor the freaking manpower to make that possible. But actually, actually, you know, you know since, since uh, you guys are actually ta- ta- talking about uh, Final Final Fantasy Seven so, so, so much, um, I actually did did read an article that I don't like the uh, director of Final Fantasy Seven or well, whatever. Whatever. And so I was like, he wants to do a uh, Final, uh, Final Fantasy Seven remake, but, but like he just uh, doesn't, that doesn't want to like. You know, just remastered or whatever. He wants to, you know, go all out. So he wants to get a team, team together. He he wants to, to like remake the game to what I would assume to be something big, but but how uh, Final Fantasy 15 is supposed to look. Like. Yeah. I mean, bro, but we're we're gonna be freaking like. I mean, dude, we're looking at the ending. I I don't even know if this game's gonna be released in this generation. If he's gonna be thinking it that way, dude, it might be released on the freaking ninth gen. PS5 or something. No, I don't know. It'll be fun. Yeah, he has, dude, the thing is, I, I don't like this stuff because he's been saying, yeah, I, know, I want this to happen, I want this to happen. He's not doing anything. I mean, when is he starting development? Is he planning on it? Is he organizing the team? I mean, I, I feel like he's training the team, though, with 13. I think 13, Final Fantasy 13 is kind of like a training ground. It's like, it's like the uh, preparation to train their staff to create a Final Fantasy 7. I think 13 is just like the guinea pig. They're milking it for what it's worth. This is like a clone of Cloud. Like, hey, if we mess up, at least it's not going to be the actual seven. You know, we'll mess up on thirteen. That's fine. But you know, I, I I think they're you know using some of their other games as trial and error. You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if they're preparing for seven because I mean seven is their strongest. I mean their strongest game. It has the most sequels. You know, and thirteen's catching up. But um, yeah, seven has the most sequels to franchises, and I mean like. I mean, movies, animes, and whatnot. You know, they've done so much spin-offs off 7 alone that, I mean, well, I it's, really it's an entire, entire chronology. Yeah. He's talking about a set possible 7 remake. <laughs> We've been talking about 7 remakes since the beginning of the podcast, bro. Like, it's been brought up. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah right, we're, so let's, I mean, we're on the topic. We're on the topic, yeah, yeah, like, So, yeah, I guess we'll end it with that. <laughs> yeah. Over to, Go over ahead, to Mr. Burfield. It's all you, bro. Well, I will. I agree with everything that Sons has said. I agree with a lot of what everyone else has said. Um, I'll just say one thing about the FO7 remake because it's been 
brought up, and I feel like I have to comment on it, but I'll keep it very, very brief. Microsoft, we hate what you've done with Tomb Raider. It was a multi-plat, and you made it exclusive. Bad Microsoft. But if Square Enix does not have the money and manpower to remake FF7, <laughs> fund it. Fund it for all it's worth. Make it exclusive because you're the one publishing it, and it was a multi-platform or originally the remake that is, bundle it with a, a signature skinned Xbox One, you're back in the console wars. That single game yeah, alone could yeah. turn the tide. Maybe not <laughs> win you the console war, but you'd be more so back in the game than you are right now. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Yeah. If Final Fantasy VII was exclusive to Xbox One, you said? The remake. Yeah. That's gonna if they had a remake exclusive to if Xbox the One... If the remake of Final Fantasy VII was the same quality, graphically, as Advent Children, those graphics, as in-game graphics for the Xbox One, that would be amazing. I think they win the console war. Seven is gone on Xbox One the day they announced it. I'm being so serious. This is like no fanboy bullshit. I will buy an Xbox. I will pre-order the Xbox One. Oh my god, I like, do. Seven is an idea. Yeah, I'm not right. Seven tempts me too, bro. But dude, me to seven buy is just in that one. holy grail of games. It's like it goes MGS one, then there's Final Fantasy seven, a few a few Mario games here and there, maybe a Sonic game, you know, the Gold Nine, and then there's like maybe two, two more games, and it's just like those are the games everyone holds in such high regard, and seven is up there with birthing. RPGs to be so used in the states and just around the world in general. So, dude, if they had a complete remake and they had online on that shit too, I'm done. I'm done. I'm buying Xbox. Yeah, I don't care how much they cost. I don't care if it's DRM. I don't care about seven. That's one game that you don't play with. So, if you yeah. put that exclusive on any system, I'm buying Wii U. I don't even care. We put that on the Ouya. I'm buying an Ouya. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. gonna be. I don't know, the thing I question, I question Microsoft's, uh, I mean, when it, it comes to RPGs, Microsoft. I mean, when it comes <laughs> to RPGs, I don't know the like, uh, support that Microsoft has on RPG games. I mean, the controller's not even really built for an RPG game. Uh, but I don't know, that's just, like, how I see it. But overall, I mean, 7 alone, I think people would freaking, would, would play 7 using, that. if that 7 game was created, like, I mean, dude, I, I think the people. Seven game was I created to that people quality. wouldn't give a shit if they had to. Yeah, they'll play, be playing with a freaking yo-yo and shit or whatever. Like, I mean, that's like, I don't know, man. Like, the controller will be a freaking donut, and they'll be playing that shit. They'll be, I mean, it's seven. It's Final Fantasy seven, like the most anticipated, weighted game. I mean, that trailer alone that they released, that tech demo for the PS3, that was the biggest tease ever. <laughs> when I saw that shit, I'm like, I'm happy about a PS3. I'm not, but then I'm like, wait, that was just a tech demo. Wait, what? That's just like the uh, intro to like a PS3 game. What? Mm-hmm. You know, thanks, thanks a lot. Oh, well, that's not the intro. That's actually the ending. Never mind. Well, oh, whatever. This game's been out for such a long time. Whatever. It deserves the spoiler. Yeah. But that's actually yeah, because the ending of Crisis Core ends exactly where Seven begins. If you haven't played Crisis Core, it's shit. Oh, man. That's one game I'll uh, uh, That's one game. Yeah. I mean, it's like a whole episode. episode. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We're already two hours. We're already two hours. So I think it's... So let's go ahead and get that. Yeah. What's good, Orphan? Well, well, let me finish up having my say on remakes, you know. I don't have much more. Yeah. Everyone else has already kind of yeah. said it all. But it seems like what we're all getting at is it depends on the quality and the nearness of the remake. You know, if it's a really old game, like a PS1 classic, and, uh, you know, some people were too young to play it back then, or some people just missed it because there's just a huge sea of games out there and you just don't have time to play everything. So if they could remake something like that from long ago and put it on a next-gen system with next-gen graphics, that's great. Uh, If it's something from a previous generation and it's exclusive and they want to put it... uh, on the next platform because a lot of people didn't get to play it, I would say that's a good reason too. If the quality has been significantly improved, like with the Halo 2 remake or the PS1 version of Resident Evil 1 and remaking it for the GameCube, excellent job there as well. 
those are real remakes. Those are worthy remakes. But with like the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, yeah, the frame rate might be faster, more stable. Um, the resolution might be higher. <laughs> I think Heavenly Sword looks better than Tomb Raider Definitive. Now, um, anyway, so you know that that to me isn't a big jump in quality, and it's multi-platform anyway. So I really don't see the need to remake it. But you know, if they if the company thinks they can get more money out of it, then you know, I guess yay. But I would rather see them invest that money into a new IP or into uh, a sequel to an existing franchise, or even something akin to an indie game. Maybe something like a smaller network game if they don't really have that much money to invest instead of just rehashing uh, a previous gen's franchise. Just take what you have, throw it into something like. Um, what have they announced the, the Tomb Raider Osiris game, um, which is like the, the top-down uh, Tomb Raider game. It's similar to the one that they released beforehand on um, the PS3 and Xbox 360. Do something again like that. But don't just take a game that you dropped last gen and that everyone has had the opportunity to play only up the resolution, only up the frame rate, and then release it because that's just a waste of time. It's a waste of resources. It's no, don't don't do that. Don't hurt yourself and don't insult the consumer. But speaking of old games, which we have been doing for a while now, that does kind of roll us into our next topic, which is PlayStation Now. So how do we all feel about PlayStation Now right now? I'm gonna keep it short. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. Go for it. I don't want anyone to fall asleep because this is a very not a very topic, but just something that's easily to talk about. Um PlayStation Now, uh, I, in theory, once again, so just like just like remasters, uh, PlayStation Now is really cool. Um, it could be like a Netflix for games type service. You know, if you pair that with PlayStation Now and PS TV, you know, those two things together are kind of like the PlayStation Move and i iToy, uh, you know, conglomerate thing. So, um, you know, uh, in theory, it's great. You know. In theory, it's amazing. In theory, it might look great, but um, in execution, uh, the price is way too much. The price is you're you're, you're overpricing. Uh, the over it's to me it's being overpriced. Um, I think that I don't think it's going to be successful. I'm gonna put it that way. I don't think it's going to be successful if Sony doesn't change the pricing. This is only contingent on the price. Sony cannot. And I don't want to spin this off into something else, but I had to say this. This has to be said. Sony has to make a change just to keep it alive. It's simple. That just make make the change, Sony. Bite the bullet and lower the price to where actual people who might only work, you know, three days out of seven days could actually buy it without having being broke. You know, like you know, realize that people don't just buy a console to watch Netflix or to buy your services. They play a console to play games. Well, that's most people's uh, objective when they buy a, a gaming console to play games on it. So when you bring people back by making them pay for PS Plus, which is already bullshit, sorry, it's bullshit, and you already bring people back for making us play for, for that, and you want us you know, to pay for this as well, it's almost like I think it's the same price. Ridiculous. You know, Sony, you need to make a change. In my opinion, PS Now should be yearly. Yearly, it should be 30 bucks. It should be 30 bucks a year. But that's like... For unlimited um, access. For, for How much is for, Netflix a year? Netflix is... Well, Under 100. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 8 bucks a month. So How much? Times 12. Seven ninety nine. Eight, eight bucks out. a month. So 8 times 12. Yeah, you, you kind of get just, I don't know the math on that, January 18th. You know, yeah, 96 bucks a year, correct? Um, so movies but, are worth more than games? I'm sorry. See, that's why I would differ with, with nah, Trent right there. I'd say 100 uh, a month flat for unlimited access to that, games. Bro. Well, that once you actually have awesome Netflix, you don't have to pay for anything else. else so. But is, isn't EA doing like a, um, what, what was it, like 10, 10 bucks a month? And you have like unlimited yeah. access to so like all the games for that. No, the thing is though, no one is trusting that shit. No one's wait, wait, trusting wait. EA. No wait, one is what? trusting it. It's five a month. Five? Oh, five a month. 
The thing is, though, no, no, I'm saying is that that's a good value. I like that. I, I can get behind that. I mean, dude, like, Sony is, like, the king of just overpricing for new things whenever they, they drop something. It's whatever it is, it's overpriced, unless it's a game of, of course, that's already had a set price. But, dude, like, the overpriced of Vita, the overpriced of the TV, the overpriced, you know, like, a PS3 when it comes out, the over, like, they overpriced. You need to realize, dog, that there are people out here who don't probably have jobs, and there are people out there whose jobs won't pay enough. So when you're charging us, you know, that much for PlayStation Now, which I already know that it's not really going to be multi-platform games. So anyone would say, oh, well, you have to think about the games that are going to be on there. Dude, Rockstar is not going to let them put GTA Five on there for free. They're not going to let, let them do that. They're going to have to charge a lot. And which is going to be the end result is there's not going to be a GTA Five probably on a PlayStation Now. There's probably not going to be a Madden uh, of that year on PlayStation Now. It's probably going to be a Madden 12 on there. You know, there'll probably be a few exclusives. Like, may, maybe, maybe a Last of Us, maybe an Infamous 2, maybe Infamous Second Son, maybe a Shadowfall, but it's not going to be like, oh, a new game came out. It's on PS Now now. No, it's it's not going to be that at all. I don't think it is. Um, you know, I've already said more than I even want to, but, you know, PlayStation Now, my final thoughts on it, I think in theory it's great. I think the execution from what I'm seeing right now is being done poorly. And if it continues down that road, it will see the same fate as Vita. It will flop, and no one will care about it within a month. So, that's my thoughts on it. How about you, Gamer? You started speaking up on it. Uh, hang on. Uh, get a Jen, Jen go before me. Sure. I don't, have my, I, I don't have my thoughts together yet. All right. Well, my thoughts on PlayStation Now, it was never really intended... For let's say hardcore gamers, because sure. in the way they implemented everything, they brought it out. They're like, hey, you know, PlayStation now. You don't have to have a PS3 or PS4, or PS Vita to actually play these games. And also, they're like, hey, if you have a Sony Bravia TV, then you can use uh, the PlayStation Now on that TV, and all you have to have is a DualShock controller, so that makes sense, and they're like, oh, well, you know, I don't want to go out and buy this system because probably not going to get their money's worth if, you know, let's say, if they don't already have a system and they already have, like, a smart TV or, you know, the next best thing in electronics or TV wise because nowadays you know you have TVs you can connect to the internet you can connect to Netflix using your TV you can and you can use Skype on your TV do all this stuff and actually you don't even have to have like I think a cable service now with some of these new devices that came out like Roku and stuff like that, you can just like, hey, I'm plug this in here, and then, you know, do this, and then I can watch TV, so, I mean, I think it kind of more appeals to the people that don't have consoles, or the people that don't necessarily, you know, have time to play the console, like, they have, like, kids and things like that, well, if you have, like, a little, like, one-year-old running around and let's say your TV is mounted on a wall, right? The TV probably pretty safe. It's out of reach of the kid, you know, but usually the consoles are down lower so There's a chance that you know they could get ripped out and they could get knocked over and you know all this stuff, but if you have the Sony Bravia TV then you'd be like, oh well all I need to worry about is the controller because the TV's fine. So, I think it appeals more to that crowd than to actual, you know, people like us. Yeah. But... You know, also, also, Jim, before you go on, I'm reading an article on M4G that says that Sony Computer Entertainment is continuing to work out price points for PlayStation Now service. The beta is currently open within North America, and Sony has 
2015. So criticism for the prices from gamers who are already trying out the service and they are trying to make the correct changes to please them. So if they do it, like I just said, I think it'll take off. I think it's like, dude, they're sitting on something so great. I don't mean to cut the job, Jim, but I had to get it out. That <laughs> they're sitting on something so explosive right now where it, this could be like the Netflix of games. And if this is even half of what I think it could be, it'll be amazing. It'll be amazingly successful because you have to think about it. Just like Jim said, an amazing point um, where – Everyone who doesn't really care about game like that and is not really interested in buying a PS4 because they know they're not going to play it like every day and it's not worth the five hundred uh, or four hundred dollar price tag for them, they're going to be like, you know what, just get a Sony TV, uh, get a Bravi or whatever, and um, I'm going to download PlayStation Now through the App Store or on, on the TV Smart uh, section, and then I'm going to play the games that I only care about. Like you know, I guess they'll probably have some two Ks, maybe a Madden on there. I highly doubt it though. But those games I like that, like Call of Duty Ghost will be on there, of course, that's a default game. So games <laughs> like that will come standard for PlayStation Now, and if that is the audience that Jen is saying, uh, where he says uh, casual gamers, not like us, the guys who are on there every day in the trenches on PS4, then I think it'll be an amazing service. Because you have to think about this, though, that the people who own Netflix aren't people who have an amazing Blu-ray collection. They aren't the people who have, you know, DVDs on DVDs, on VHS, on VHS. They just have maybe a few select movies in their collection that they love watching, and they're waiting for Netflix to put up series and TV shows and stuff like that. So, yeah, great point, Jen. I just wanted to get that out there, that they are working out the price, so that basically alters everything I wanted to say. Yeah, that was actually my next point, because the pricing is huge factor in the whole digital stuff. I, I think I think even even if you're already a plus user, I mean the, the pricing of probably you become a now user at the same time. I mean like I, I don't know man, I don't, I don't think it's worth it for the two. Yeah. I mean uh -huh. it just it stacks up. I, I think what they should do is if they're gonna have that kind of uh, system, I think if you own one you get a percentage off the other. If you're already a something like that it'll make more sense. Not like pay full price for you know, I think if you're already a plus user, you should get like, you know, 50% off now or something. Or something like that. I don't know, not 50, but whatever. But you have to have some type of percentage off. Yeah, because like, that would motivate me to have both. It's like, well, I also want streaming. You know, like, you know, I want to play a full game. <clears throat> you know, maybe I, I want to try out the game. You know, I can uh, play the game or whatever. And if I don't like it, you know, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm paying for the service. It's like renting a game. But if I like the game enough, I can actually go ahead and buy a full retail version of it. I think that's cool, you know. Um, you know, obviously the experience on the streaming is not the same as holding, uh, owning a physical copy uh, or a digital, a full digital copy. Um, but you know, it's I don't, you know, it's not going to be the same experience. So I don't think they should charge as much as a you know full version, like as if you owned it. So you know, I think. You should shave off some of the price because of that, and you should shave off some of the price if you already own another service like PlayStation Plus. Because <coughs> having both is completely pointless. <coughs> so I think that should be in there. <coughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that's my take. I mean that's my two cents on that. Giving people an incentive to get both services or as many services as Sony offers is always good for Sony. And yeah. the consumer likes to see that. They like to see if you know if I have now or if I have plus some money a discount for now. Yeah. Then that's a benefit. Yeah. That's more money I get to save. Yeah, and, and motivate people to have more services. And, you know, right. It's like yeah, and that's that's more money for. I mean, because it's it's just ridiculous. And I mean, if people if you're gonna have it like that, if you're gonna have it how it currently is right now, people are just gonna pick one or the other. Wouldn't it be better if you have that and a little bit more? And then they're going to be making, I mean, not as much as they pay full price, but it's they're still making more money. They're going to be banking off of, either way, they're going to be banking off both services. And, uh, I mean, so, yeah, <clears throat> I have no idea. But, I mean, it's up to them. It's not where they go. But I think that would make more sense. I mean, I think that would, that would be a much smarter practice if they go with that route. I, mean, Ardio, I know that you, like, are a huge fan of, like, streaming services and whatnot. You use that, uh... I think you would use the music unlimited, like whatever it is, uh, to download and not download to have like a playlist. So, what do you think about? I uh, use. Uh, yeah, I 
I really like PlayStation. I mean, it's still in beta. Uh, the technology looks like it's there. I've seen some lag in the videos, but of course it's going to lag. It's Again, it's still in beta, and I think they'll probably never eliminate all lag. But um, it's it doesn't look that bad. Like It looks like something you can adapt to, and depending on the price, if it's right, and they can get into that sweet spot, I see nothing wrong with paying to stream a game either as a... Uh, an a la carte service where you just pay one flat fee for a month or for a year and you get to play all you want or if you pick out an individual title. It all really depends on price and selection. Um, lately with the EA Access thing, that was sort of a big thing, how Sony's like, oh, well, it's not really worth uh, what EA's charging. Or, <laughs> actually, it's not how they phrased it. They phrased it cleverly. They said it's, it's not a good investment. And I can see what they're saying. It's in the short term, it's actually a better investment than PlayStation now. Um, Solid Rev, shout out to Solid Rev on YouTube. You know, he was looking at all these people who were making fun of EA Access, and he's like, "So you can spend five bucks to play six, I think it's six current gen games. One of which is Battlefield Four. Uh, oh, and you can play Madden." For like, what was it? You can play Madden for six hours. Twenty-five. Madden twenty-five for six hours. Yeah, and it's like, or you can pay, what is it, four bucks to play a PS Now game for one hour, which is the better value. And it's like, you know, EA Access does have really good value behind it, but the reason why it's not a good value in the long run is because if EA is successful with it, then you know Ubisoft is going to follow up. You know, Activision is going to follow up, and then what you're going to have is each publisher is going to have their own little mini store and so you're going to have to know like well if i want to play this game or these series of games i'm going to have to know which publisher makes that and then subscribe to that specific store and for hardcore gamers it's going to be irksome but we're going to be familiar enough with game publishers and developers to do it casual gamers it's going to be too much of a headache they're not going to want to deal with it they're not going to see it as a good value even if the price is right so Sony's approach, where it's like a, more of a Netflix, where it doesn't matter who publishes it, who develops it, it's all under one tent. That's brilliant. That's the way to go. And so if they can nail the, the price down, and if they can nail the selection down, and they can get more uh, games on there, and they can get more publishers on board with it, then I think they have a real winning service, and that can easily win them. I don't want to say the gen. I think it's it's still too, way too early to say that. But that could be what wins them generations of gaming because Microsoft isn't talking about using their cloud service in any way similar to this. Nintendo has no cloud service. Nintendo barely has an online service. They're still trying to get that up and running. But <laughs> PlayStation is ahead of the game and they like shot past Microsoft in a single generation shockingly fast. So they just need to keep it up. You know, the legs on the service are really wobbly right now, but it's getting there. Just need to have faith in it, pour more money into it. Get, uh, get people's feedback and try to improve as much as they can. <laughs> okay. That's and, my reaction. Uh, <laughs> they got a real winner on their hands. So, Jim, did you have anything else to add? Um, <laughs> That's really. my reaction. I'm sorry, dude. I, I just had to get, get that out. Of there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, nice. the selection is also a big deal. So that's about as much as I have to say about that. I got my uh, traditional shit going so. Go, go. <laughs> uh, but, but, like, so I was like, as we started t- talking on here about, about well, P- PS Now and EA yeah, Access, so I was like, right, right, right now, I, I did get, get the chance to, to uh, play the uh, closed beta of the, uh, you know, P- PS Now. And, like, as of right, right now, I'd rather have EA Access over P- PlayStation Now. And, uh, and it was like, you, you, you guys saying, saying that, but, but like, that there's a whole PlayStation Plus versus PS Now. It's like you, you don't want people to like pick and choose. Uh, there, there, there are. Uh, I'll, I'll say that that there, there are some some people with, with, within some Sony that have, that have actually said so they'll they'll take PlayStation Now or no 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 uh, PlayStation Plus over PS Now. And uh, the, the point Sun Sun's made of like having PlayStation PlayStation Plus and having you know, discounts on PS Now stuff. So I was like, that that makes sense. But I've been taught that back to, to, to like some some people and seeing seeing posts on like Facebook and whatnot. So I was like, 
that Metal Gear Solid 4 is in the play PlayStation that now beta right, right, right now, it's like, I, I forgot, Bob, but like, I think it was like about like 20, 25 bucks for 90 days. And like on, on Amazon, you spend like six dollars more or so, something. It's like you can buy the full game. And and like the the, the whole issue with, with the PlayStation now that I've experienced, it's like there is pretty bad input lag, and it, the uh, graphics it's like sub seven twenty, which is pretty poor. And mm-hmm. and like my my uh, connection is uh, like really really good, and so I was like you're you're um your experience is really dependent on your connect connection. So I was like, mine is like solid. Um, but, uh, uh, so when, 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 when there was a, when the closed beta became open, open beta, the, there was a blog post of a uh, Jack, Jack user, very great guy. I met him at three twenty thirteen. But, um, he, he did go on a post to, to like sign someone's comment and, and reply saying, saying that, um, that, uh, they are actually working on a subscription fee. For, for that so so hopefully that that comes and actually happens because I think a subscription fee is more favorable over you know playing paying for each individual game for like a certain amount of days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I guess that brings us to our final topic then. The TGS predictions coming next month. Tokyo Game Show. What? Yes. Tokyo Game Show, which airs from September 18th through the 21st, three day event. Um, so there okay. is going to be a the pre-show to the Tokyo Game Show. I believe that's on September second. I want to say. Okay. Um, TGS. Quick thought. I know people are starting to nod uh-huh. off. It is matter of fact. Just giving y'all the time. It's twelve fifty-seven on the East Coast. Oh, there you go. We're pulling another. Uh... Yeah. So all right. So let's get this. So let's get this. Um. Let's get, get these thoughts out the way. TGS. TGS, I expect good things from Sony because Sony came out today and they had uh, a quote saying that uh, from Yoshida Yoshida saying that um, there are going to be a lot of games shown at TGS. Uh, games I'm predicting to see. I'm predicting to see some, hopefully some deep down gameplay. Actually, I don't think that's going to be there, but I hope they're just pulling our leg. It's been a while since we've gotten surprises at like conferences. People are so boring nowadays. Developers never, ever... Like, just say, oh, it's not going to be there, and then it's there. They, they never do that anymore. I hate that. It need to be more exciting. But um, <laughs> I hope to see some deep down. I want to see some uh, dying light. I want to see some of that gameplay. I think that's going to be on both conferences, but I want to see that. That's the zombie game. I want to see um, Till Dawn, the horror game that somebody's making. That jump looks crazy. Uh, I want to see Uncharted 4 easily. I need to see that. I need to see some more gameplay from that. If I hope we are blessed with some gameplay from One Charter Four, we we need to see that. Um, I'm excited to see uh, some Bloodborne. I hope it gives them more of that. That definitely should be there. I think we're gonna definitely game. see that. We have to we have to see that. Yeah. Um, I want to see some evolve since that got uh, delayed till um, next year. I want to see some Order 1886. Um, I'm intrigued by the game. I'm most likely, to be honest with y'all, if the developers of the game come across this card podcast for, for some reason, I'm probably not going to buy your game um, because it doesn't have multiplayer. I'm being so serious. Um, <laughs> I like the character, you know, uh, voices. Not, not not a big fan of the character the designs. Uh, it, it's, 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 you know, it, they're, they're moderately okay, you know. Um, so, so order, you have to see that. I want to see some more LBP3. I want to see some of that for sure. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, we can, you know, get some thoughts on that from a certain someone. But I'm not going to say anything. Um, we can, uh, you know, talk about it later on. Um, TGS, overall, I want to see some MGS5 as well. I want to see some of that. Kojima has to be there. Uh, I want to see it in your state. Yeah, I, I, I think, I'm going to be honest I think we're getting a release date November next year, along with uh, our, with the Uncharted. I think we're getting both of those in November, just for the last the last I, stretch I just, of the year. I'm just five. I say early 2015. I don't think it'll be late 2015. You think early? I think late, man. I think I think because he's trying to build this shit up. He's trying to build the hype up, getting people excited. But more predictions. I predict that Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter will be shown at a, I think. You know, it will be shown, and 
it'll be laughed at. I, w- I want to see some RPGs. I think I think the Vita is going to get a, a, a look at this. I think uh, the Vita is. At this TGS. Yeah. yeah um, Man, since you know, all this stuff really, is from Japan now. So. A lot of the stuff is from J- Japan. Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of Hatsune Miku stuff. I think we're going to see some Sora <laughs> Online stuff. I think we're going to see, um, you know, some Dang and Roll Pond Part 3 stuff. Well, Sora um, Online is already out. I don't know if they're I know, but I think, I think there's going to be a sequel they announced. Um, oh, okay. Already? So I think we're going to see that. Yeah. Oh, oh, I, yeah, yeah. We're, we're late. Yeah, yeah, we're late. Kind of late on I think we're gonna see that. I think we're gonna see a kill the kill game for 3ds, which I think will be really dope, along with an Attack on Titan game for 3ds. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking TGS is gonna be better than E3 this year, man. I'm gonna be so clear. TGS is probably gonna be better than E3 because this is where like all the developers of the classic games and the people who like wanted to like show off for Japan, because Japan makes up a good amount of sales. For, for games that if you can get a Japanese audience then you already won the console war that's the way I, I see it if you win Japan and you win the West then you won the console war there's no one else to worry about I love you Europe but no if it's, nah, it's, Europe, Europe has some dope stuff man I mean, Japan I Japan yeah, and yeah, the that's US that's the only way that's, that's the only way to my win the console war European, European. I know yeah, but that's Gilles, still Gilles, that's Gilles. still if you win Japan and you win the US then you win the console war Europe isn't a factor in, win, in winning the console war. Even though they do make a good game, yeah. but um, Japan and the U.S. Sony Monica are, and Naughty Dog are my favorite. Yeah, you gotta win, win the West, man. But other than that, I don't have anything else to say. I'm gonna pass it on. I know I'm getting a little tired, but it's all good. Uh, go to Jin. Yeah, what's up, Jin? I'm sorry, gamer, gamer. I'm sorry. Damn, I was thinking, I'm I'm going to order on my screen. Damn it, my bad. What's up, Jin? <laughs> uh. With that T- T- TGS, that that is not really much I'm expecting, but I, I want to see to see a uh, rare release date for MGS Five, hopefully. And, and like, uh, uh, so I heard some Sony like kind of held back about a bunch of uh, stuff on Gamescom to to save it for a T- TGS Sun. So hopefully we see that new uh, Drogon But uh, other than that, I can't I can't really name off stuff that that we haven't already seen from three and Gamescom combined. But uh, but like, yeah, you know. Uh, again, well, with, with all the stuff they have, they hug off. Maybe we'll see like a couple new IPs or something. Do you think we'll see the? Um, do you think we'll at first? This is a question to everybody who cares. Last Guardian. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, fuck If do, if they do, this will be like. Be for if, I'm just more. saying, it's not going to happen. It's just not. But if by some like divine intervention we see a Last Guardian like trailer. I'll, I'll, or even a teaser. If we see a teaser, any inkling of the Last Guardian, if we see anything in that, then that it's already better than E3 because <laughs> no one's expecting this shit. But um, now, nah, do you all think we're gonna see um PT gameplay since that's gonna be Kojima as well? Do you think we're gonna see GTA? I'm sorry, GT. Yeah. Man, not GT. Freaking yeah. um, GT Metal Gear 7. and PT. Yeah. I, I doubt it dude, because P P T was just just you know a teaser. They're, 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 uh, it's still in like basically pre alpha of the game, so it's like they they don't really have much done with it the yet. The graphics didn't look pre alpha though. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that, that that that's that's a sad sad thing. He actually dumbed down the graphics in P T to to make it look like an indie game. So when 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 the full game comes out, oh my god, it's over. It's done. <laughs> I don't even need to leave the house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, my turn now. Uh, Tokyo Game Show probably see Pokemon because you know Japanese and they love their pocket monsters. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. Possibly see uh, Renko Suki Game as long as they. That's another Japanese game. Uh, didn't actually see it in Europe, but then again, you didn't see it in E3. Uh, let's see, another game, possibly more Naruto stuff, new Naruto game. Probably Hatsune Miku stuff. That's really big over there. Yeah, that's second. Yeah, and uh, let's see, what else? Can't really think of a whole lot. Let's see, maybe... That one game, Dynasty Warriors, maybe. Well, yeah. 
Dynasty Warriors, okay. <laughs> Dynasty Warriors, maybe uh, the Yakuza game, Yakuza Ishin. I think that might already be out, but they may announce a localization for that, so who knows. Other than that, I don't really know. Probably some Final Fantasy theatrhythm for the DS. I believe that's it for me. Alright. Son? Alright, uh, for me, my predictions, uh, man, uh, obviously we're gonna have something from Project Diva at second, so, rock on, awesome game. Uh, let's see, what else, da, 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 da. you know, it might, it might be teased at the very ending by Sony, but Polyphony's Gran Turismo Possible 7 for the PS4, something slid in there, a tease, maybe, I don't know, or maybe next year, but I don't know, I have a, I don't know, man, I would not be surprised if I see a, just a, a small tease of it, you know, and it's like, well, it's not coming out till next next year, next year, or whatever, however long it takes, <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised, I would not be surprised, oh, yo, I'm not, with the driving wheel, like, you look around and stuff, like, oh, there's one behind me, like, screw the mirrors, <laughs> oh, shit, you know, teaching how to do that in driving school, like, don't look bad, look, these are mirrors. But, um, anyways, uh, <laughs> you lose points when you look behind you. <laughs> um, let's see. What else? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Project Morpheus with the, you can look around the car, look around the interior. You, you mess around, you push the buttons and stuff, like turn on the radio. Let's see, what else? Dude, I don't know, man. Uh, I, obviously, Bloodborne, that's going to be on there. That's uh -huh. a big, uh, that's a new IP from Japan, and, you know, so... I'm hoping, you, I'm hoping uh, for, uh, sons, do you think yeah. that we could possibly see, um, do you think we'll possibly get an announcement from Capcom or who they're signing with, <laughs> or if they're going to oh, get maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I don't, I, I doubt it. Capcom, I don't know, they'll announce it over there like it's a big thing. I don't think it's something they're really proud of. Uh, uh, maybe. They, they would not be proud of that shit. It's like, yeah, you know, we're we have been doing so good, so we're, we're selling ourselves now. Guess who we sold ourselves to? <laughs> I mean, they're going to probably say, like, oh, hey, you know, um... We decided to partner know, we're, with... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're proud partners now with Disney Interactive Woo! or whatever. So... Oh, my gosh. So now we're going to make Marvel vs. Capcom. And it's going to be, like, exclusive to Disney stuff or whatever. I don't know. Mickey's <laughs> going to be one of the fighters. Yeah, Mickey's going to be a fighter in there. And uh, and also, they're going to have a Star Wars... Uh, they're going to have a freaking a clone trooper in there. And... Uh, <laughs> And whatever. What else? It, you know, I, I really don't know, man. You know, as for Japan, I mean, there's stuff that I would like to see. I mean, obviously, you know, whatever happens, the last Guardian. I mean, that's. I, I'm not even. I'm not really holding my breath for that game anymore. Whatever. I, I know that that, that studio's geniuses, but you know, whatever they're working on, I mean, whatever it'll happen, if it happens, it happens. And but I mean, uh, and what I would like to see, or what, what random thing, if I, I thought it's a prediction, but it'll be cool if. Uh, they release a new Toro game or something. Because yeah, it's always like every two years or something, a new game for Toro comes out every two or three years. It's been it's been a while since we had anything for Toro. The last one was, I think, was that P uh, PS Vita app with uh, Toro's friend network. You know, I, I think it'll be neat if they release, like, something. I mean, it, it'll be cool. I, I would love to. I mean, I doubt it. I seriously do doubt it. But Toro, uh, that's Party. That's, like, one of my favorite Toro games. Uh, that will be awesome if it comes on the West. It's not because now we're getting Toro stuff here in the West. So it'd be great if something like that. I mean, I would like to see it, but I doubt it. But I mean, other than that, man, um, you know, for me, it's uh, at the current moment. Uh, I mean, that's it, man. I'm not, I'm not really. Whatever, whatever they reveal, they reveal. So you know, I'm, I'm just. I'm gonna see a um, Smash Bros. Yeah. game, but that's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's natural. I mean, that's gonna, yeah, obviously, it's gonna be there. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's it, man. Oh, it works. Yeah. Oh, you, bro. When it comes to me, my TGS, I don't know what, if you'd call them predictions. I wouldn't call them predictions. For me, they're just things I want to see. Uh, from Sony, I'm looking forward to Deep Down. Actually, that's from Capcom, but it's Sony exclusive. Uh, it looks like Demon Souls. It looks like a Dark Souls kind of game. And it's supposed to be free to play, which really has me interested. So that's on my list. Mm -hmm. Also, like gamers said, Guerrilla Games' new IP. We were really hoping to see that at Gamescom. Uh, Shuhei Yoshida tweeted that some stuff from Gamescom got held back. 
uh, to debut at TGS, so maybe that's one of them, hopefully. Maybe that's what I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some rumors that, uh, from different sources, that Sony has been talking to other publishers about some third-party exclusives, or maybe not even third-party exclusives necessarily, but third-party games that were exclusive to other systems that may now also come to PlayStation. So as far as what those might be, we don't know. I'm really hoping one of them is the Monster Hunter franchise. Yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. For Vita. For Vita. Yeah, that, yeah. 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 I don't care what it's for. If it's for yeah, Vita, okay. PS4, PS3, I'll get it for PSP. I don't care. <laughs> no, I don't think that comes to throw with Sony right now. I don't know. I, I always yeah, have to throw with Sony, but they need the money. Yeah. yeah. PS4 yeah, selling like hotcakes. Yep. Yeah. So, I just installed Bates. Can't deny it anymore. So. We hate you, but we'll take your money, so you know. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. I mean, isn't there already a Vita? Uh, there is already a Vita. Um, Monster Hunter in Japan. Yeah. 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 Japan. They sure did. E three. Has been getting all of the Monster Hunter games in Japan. All of them are on PS. So they're just holding it. There's no excuse. It's just it's just the issue of publishing and, and dubbing it over here. Right. With the uh, wow. I, I think they just don't have the money to publish it over here. And, and they have, like, oh, well, maybe it's not going to sell. I mean, I think it's BS because when it comes to Monster Hunter, there's a big install base and a, a dedicated one, too, over here in the West. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's decent in the West, but it's not as strong as it is no, in Japan. Not, yeah, yeah. Nor in Europe. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> I mean, yeah, you go on Ad Hoc Party, there's still people on that. Yeah, I'm on there every day. Yeah, like, I mean, I, that's a PSP game from, like, what? Like, how long ago? Like, 2010? 2006. 2006? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, no. Not, no. no. Monster Hunter no. Freedom 1 was from 2006. Okay, all right. But uh, the one that... Freedom Night. Freedom Night. Yeah, the one I play. Uh, I think that was 2010. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, around the time of Iron Star. Everyone would be like, you gotta get on there. We really peer pressure everybody on that. But, yeah, I got that game. I loved it. So yeah, anyway. with, 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 within two, uh, 2006 and 2010, there were there were three Monster Hunter games on the PSP in North America. Yeah. Where where's everything else for like the Vita <laughs> and the PS4? What the hell? <laughs> uh, Capcom, all in Japan. Yeah, it's all good. I, I think Capcom is <laughs> mad salty at like Sony. I mean, they they've been doing that. I mean, you saw what they did with PS All Stars and like Dante, like man. We could have picked like any Dante. Any Dante would have been cool. They got that, that DMC one, bro. That Tenberry Dante. Now they're gonna be reverting back to the original. Dante. I think I hope so. Yeah, are they, aren't they gonna do that? I mean, didn't they say that they're gonna just scrap that DMC thing and just go back to the traditional because everyone was complaining? And I, hope so. I hope that becomes like Capcom's dark little secret. Like, let's not talk about this ever again. Let's <laughs> yeah, let's kind of sweep it under the rug. Just go back. To the it's kind of like ET we'll from the Atari. Like Metal Gear 2 Snake's Revenge. Remember that? Like, we'll just bury it out in the desert. Yeah, it's like, no one, no yeah. one remembers this game. <laughs> it's funny because they immortalized it on PS All Stars. So that was. <laughs> Damn, Capcom. Oh, man, you hated Sony, man. Like, dude, I, that was so dumb. I, was, I mean, so many characters were immortalized. Like, but the wrong ones. Like, you got Revenge and yeah. Trident. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, I mean, you know, gamer like the game, but but you know, he's a better pick than Solid Snake. I mean, who cares about him compared to Ryan? Yeah, right. Solid Snake doesn't matter. Oh, I love the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not saying it's a bad game. We're just saying, you know, Snake is a oh, lot more character than Ryan. I wanted, I wanted the original one that was was being done with the Fox engine, but they couldn't. They weren't able to because the 360 was like. It wasn't able. It, it again held back the held back gaming again because of technological like you know struggles or whatever. So they had to hand it over to another team. A little bit out of topic. Yeah, my bad. But <laughs> I don't know, man. Right no. for another day. Yeah. Well, that's all I'm looking forward to from PlayStation. From Nintendo, uh, I'm definitely looking forward to more of their first party stuff. Smash Brothers. Yeah, Smash <laughs> Brothers. Uh, the new Legend of Zelda, Go Anywhere, Open World uh, game, that looks great. M more on the uh, Yoshi's Woolly World game, I love the way that game looks. 
Uh, and also Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for Nintendo's 3DS. Uh, again, I'm a huge Monster Hunter fan, and anything I can see on that game just looks great. Maybe they'll announce a 3DS bundle for the West. Well, they'll probably won't announce it for the West at TGS, but I don't know. Maybe they'll announce a bundle over there in the East, and uh, who knows, maybe we might get it in the West. Uh, from Microsoft, I'm only looking forward to one thing, and that is they are uh, dropping the system in Japan, I believe it's next month, in September. I think oh. it's September so I think it's September 29th. That dropping Xbox, the price or dropping the actual system? Dropping the system. They're sending the Xbox One consoles to Japan to be released to, to sell. They, they, they still haven't released their system? <laughs> no, <laughs> what about um, or they, they they the party. something? What about uh, Scalebound? Scale, it's too soon. I have to. I don't think they're really going to show much about uh, Scalebound at TGS. Maybe they might show some gameplay, but I feel like whatever they show off at TGS isn't going to re be representative of the true product. I think it's still way too early in development. But you know, that's that might be something they should show up. But I want to see overall how does Microsoft sell the Xbox One to the Japanese gaming audience? The 360 has sold terrible in that region compared to the other regions. And uh, it, you look at the week-to-week -week sales of the Xbox 360 compared to every other system, and it's consistently at the very bottom of the totem pole. So how are they going to make Japanese gamers want the Xbox One? They don't really have any franchises to play off of like they do in the States and they do in Europe, like Gears and Halo, because those weren't that big in Japan. Uh, they're going to have to cater more to the RPG crowd, and they're going to have to perhaps get more uh, Japan-exclusive games on there. You so know, I, I'm, what they could I want to see what they're going to do. I'll kind of see. You know, you know, you know what they you could mean? do, and I don't want to like they don't get along with this tirade, but um, <laughs> what what they could do to solve that that problem would be um, anime. I think uh, in any sort of way, if they like had like an anime channel. Or they had like showed support for you know the art form known as anime and, and entertainment. I think that would increase a lot. Imagine like Halo TV, but for anime. Like imagine like a PlayStation Now service, but for anime. Not like a Crunchyroll. I'm talking about like they have like just like categories on shows on shows on shows closer to Microsoft at a good price. I think that could bring a lot of attention to them. Yo, Microsoft has service exclusive to them that shows a lot of anime. I, th I think Japan has anime in their basic channels. Of course they do. Of course they do. <laughs> I mean, they don't. But imagine, like, but not <laughs> everyone's going to have, like, not yeah. everyone's going to have, like, you know, reruns like Cowboy Bebop come on every day. They're going to have the new shit. So if they, if, I'm, 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 I'm just saying, I'm speculating that if Microsoft wants to solve that problem, of uh, catering more to people at the at the TGS, this is just an idea. I think they could use anime um, and just Japanese games in general to yeah. um, basically boost their sales Watch over there because they're struggling. TV with but... our Xbox. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that is a situation they might try to use, but the me they're pushing the media angle has not worked out for them well with the Xbox One and well anywhere. So uh, I can see that. I can see them maybe doing it, but it's like, well, we have tons of anime over here already on TV. For the old episodes, we probably have something like Netflix. I don't know if Netflix is available in Japan. I, I, I see Crunchyroll. Yeah. I through. mean, yeah, Crunchyroll. We don't have we don't have basic anime channels in in US. So Crunchyroll is like, I mean, it's a Crunchyroll. Crunchy 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 yeah, that's it works pretty well over here. So I mean, but in Japan, it's like anime is common over there. So it's like. You know, I think I think they'll be more interested in probably like stuff that they don't usually have. I don't know, but I mean, anime is extremely popular. They're obviously they have they're gonna have all their anime style games and stuff, and you know shows and whatnot. But I mean, yeah, I mean, make some exclusive draw like stuff. Make I mean, uh, Sony did it. Sony made some exclusive. They had the I think what was it called? Uh, uh, dude, I can't remember the name. But it's like X X something. Uh, it was an anime. Oh yeah, Zam, Zam, right? Or Zam? Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Dude, that anime was dope, and it was the same artist that did Eureka Seven, and that was exclusive to the PlayStation Network. It was actually made by Sony. Sony actually worked on that anime. It was exclusive to the PSN. And shame they didn't take off like as you know as people wanted. I mean, people ended up just streaming it on the internet instead of getting on PSN, which is messed up. But still. 
I think if Xbox does something like that, I mean, it's going to end up probably the same thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to take off. Sony tried it already here in the West, yeah. but who knows? Maybe Japan will be successful. I mean, they overall, just have to for, overall, for for my, my, my stuff, I think uh, uh, it's like not normally the, their whole bit was just model wherever right, right now is like playing it safe with like Call of Duty, Gears, Halo, and whatnot. They, they need to take risks and make new IP yeah, games. They need to reach out brand branch more. That's what Sony is, is all about. It's like, it's like they, they, they like, they like, they like, te- or like get, get to developers to so like man, make new, new games, be creative. So it's like Microsoft only created it safe with like things that are already successful. They need to take risks and branch out. Yeah, that's a like, great yeah. point. Right? It doesn't like burning their money. They're very, very careful with how they spend their. Uh, I mean, well, you know. Just real quick, I mean, Microsoft, just by nature, before, or if you know, move on to our closing thoughts, Microsoft, by nature, is a company that plays it very safe. They're going to be a company that plays it very by the book and doesn't want to take those chances that could blow up in their face. That's where Microsoft is weak at, in my opinion. And Microsoft never comes out. They, they never, like, people want a Microsoft handheld. People do. But Microsoft knows that if Sony can't compete with, with Nintendo, what the hell do you think uh, Xbox One Go would, would, would even do? That would sell maybe. <laughs> oh my god, it would sell a million and that'll be it. That'll be it. Like people like that's if that's what a Vita can if, if a Vita can only barely push four million, then Xbox Go would be like freaking oh my god, it'll it would be it'll be awful. It'll be a disaster. But that's because Microsoft is afraid to take that risk. Microsoft is that is that person who doesn't want to get hurt in a relationship, so they don't be in a relationship. They don't they they, they don't want to take that chance to see if it's going to be different. <laughs> nah, Sony is the exact opposite. They will put themselves out there, and if it doesn't work, I don't know, go back to the drawing board, new thing. So I mean, yeah, man, if, if they have, if Microsoft wants to get um, an audience. In Japan and in Europe, I guess you could say. Actually, not just Japan. They have a good audience here, but they want to get it in that area. They will have to do something crazy, like do like, do something just completely outlandish that everyone will look at and be like, "That's kind of weird." You're only trying to get to Japan, but you're only trying to get those guys. So, so I think an anime channel would be working pretty good for them. Um, anime games, RPGs, you know, maybe you know, arcade for anime games. That would, that would, that would be profitable for them. I think so. So yeah. Yeah. That's really hard to break into an already well-established thing. It's like, you know, you go to a bar over here, and you're like, hey, I have alcohol. I'm like, oh, that's great. Well, um, what do you want us to do yeah, with it? That's true. I, that is true. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard. Yeah, but Microsoft is going to have to figure out a way. It's hard, but it's not impossible. <laughs> so they got to figure it out do it. They, they're going to show up with their little console and put it on the table. And then a couple of guys are gonna show up in suits with briefcases, put the briefcases on the things, open them up. Like, how much would it cost to uh, you to stand in our corners? And uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like, they're gonna buy other people to be temporary exclusives, and they're gonna buy everyone because it's cheap, it's easy. I mean, people, the game comes out, people want to play the game. They've been waiting for the longest time. They can't play it anywhere else. Shows up on Xbox first. Timed exclusive. It's it's a lot cheaper than paying for a studio and maintaining the studio, you know. And they get the they get the first sales. So timed exclusives. I'm thinking that's the route they're gonna go. Once they get over in Japan, a lot of exclusives that were originally only on the PlayStation are now gonna be uh they're all gonna be bought out. Everything's gonna start arriving late. I think they're gonna it's gonna be a rinse and repeat uh of the seventh gen only this time. You know, going on over here. So I, they're gonna just follow the same strategy. They're gonna rent like games, and yeah. they're gonna re- rent exclusivity. That's it. That's their strategy. There's a, there's no other way you're gonna because, because that's all they do. They're not gonna compete yeah. at all because that's what yeah. they tried the 360 and it didn't work. So no, it did repeat. work. No, it did work. It did work until not Sony Japan. started. Well, not in Japan. People actually waited. They waited yes. it out. Dude, Whoa, it's that Japan means they're freaking samurai, about. bro. It was it was a <laughs> freaking honor. Like people here in the states are like. Nah, dude, peace out, bro. They don't care. But Japan, what? There really? are the games that have been released I'm that surprised. Microsoft has announced as exclusive because, you know, Microsoft doesn't want, like to shed yeah. light that, you know, timed exclusive is just timed exclusive. Just call it exclusive. Yeah. So, yeah. 
you know, they release it as an exclusive on 360s, and that boosts hardware sales, and people buy it, and then they find out later it's coming to PS3, and they get pissed off, and they just, like, I get a better version of PS3. <laughs> yeah, they just go out and buy it for PS3. Yeah. So, you know, they yeah. will hold out. They, yeah. they, I don't want to say they're smarter than us, that sounds bad, but, you know, yeah. they will Sunrise. carefully analyze what's going on in the market. They're very savvy that way. Yeah. So, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. The West is very impatient. Uh, that's that's the that nature of the culture. Very impatient. Yeah. The West is very impatient. I'm gonna say it straight up. All right, and not like Japan. Japan's like dude, they're like they're very reserved. They're like, okay, I'll wait. I'm um, wrong. You know, I, I save more money. I can get myself some. Uh, I can eat better. I don't have to be on my ramen diet. You know, it's like you know, I'm a student. Uh, you know, I can yeah. since I'm not buying the game this you know this year. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be eating better. So that's what like. makes it better for business. Yeah. You know, we buy yeah. more games than they So if a game comes out, and first they have on a lot system, more stuff. people aren't going to wait. They're just going to pick it up first on whatever <laughs> system it comes out on. Yeah. Usually. And not, not only that, Japan Japan's library is. I have a lot of friends from Japan, and I notice their library is not as large as a library of someone in the West. And I see. I mean, this is what the majority of people have added. You know, I'm basing it off. I'm not. This is not a worldly statistic or anything, but. I noticed that a lot of my friends, uh, they pick one game and they focus on that one game. Cause that's the game that they pick. Is like they have like this bond with it, and you know they play other games too. But it's like they have their favorite game to stick to. They dedicate themselves to that game and they get really good at it. You know, um, they you know they can't spend that much money. Like in the in the West, like we spend a lot of money. Uh, you know, this is you know when it comes to the economy, like you know we're whatever. Yeah. We spend a lot. Japan, not as much. So they have to make their decision wisely. And they said, I mean, they, they pick one decision and stick with it. And mm-hmm. yeah, I've seen friends like they, from Japan, they still play Modern Asian Racers. And that game came out, what? Like, how, 2010? 2000, yeah, like 2010. And people, like, there's there's a lot of my friends from Japan are still playing that. And, um, yeah, I look at that. I'm amazed. And they're experts. I mean, dude, they memorize every little, like, nook and cranny of the entire game. And I see that a lot in Japan. Like, every time I get online, RPG games and stuff like that, especially like they really because RPG games you can invest so much hours into that one game, <laughs> like is like you don't need any other game, and that's why I think yeah. that they have that mind is like I don't care, like I'll wait, you know, or you know I'm not I don't need to beat anything because the, the thing is a lot of Western games are fast, fast arcade, you finish them fast, you go to the next one because it's you know we have uh, we have a huge consumer market, so like we always buy to the, go to the next one. Japan, not so much. They, they want for quality. They want to for something that they can continue, and they buy the DLC, and they keep And that's why you see a lot more add-ons for uh, Eastern games than you see for Western games. Right. Right? But if you buy one of the Japanese games, and you're going to see, like, dude, the list of add-ons, like, goes down. Like, what? Like, yeah, I mean, Ace Combat. I mean, uh, uh, what's this game? Uh, Monster Hunter. You know, a lot of games have a lot of DLC for it. Well, maybe that's Microsoft's answer to this about how they're going to sell to to the East. Maybe they have to invest in a new IP like Gamer was suggesting and try and find out what about those certain games, what about like Pokemon and Monster Hunter and other games of that nature really appeal to that audience and go ahead and try and d- develop a new IP based around those concepts and then just sell it with a lot of DLC and hope it takes mm-hmm. off. And if it does, try to make other games similar to that and maybe make that a franchise. So we'll see. I mean, I, for their sake, I hope so. Yeah, game developers in the East really bank off their DLC more than uh, their actual... I mean, they, yeah. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work over here in the West. I mean, we have, the, again, the impeachment mm-hmm. audience. Mm-hmm. No, but hold on. They, they, their their strategy is retarded because they, they want to try to invent like, they're releasing all these ultimate versions. Japan doesn't, I mean, well, I don't... I, that, that, that's a different topic, too. It's, that's, you think so? Called, yeah. All right, we'll write it down for the next one. Because I, I want to get on that. <laughs> all right, I mean, that'll be next time. I got, I got a lot of stuff about that. Yes, <laughs> you do. Yeah. So, closing thoughts. Closing thoughts, plain and simple. Um, this is my, my, my closing thoughts. have nothing to do with anything we talked about. Uh, right, right quick, just want to give you all few sentences on this. Uh, DC and Marvel uh, films. These are my closing thoughts of this month. I went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy this month, and it, to me, it just further proves that Marvel Studios and, and uh, anyone affiliated with Marvel Studios is listening to the fans, and they're giving us great quality films, while DC at the moment 
is relying on only two characters to trudge them along. And they need to stop that. They need to get more people involved. But, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Guardians of the Galaxy, fantastic movie. Gamescom, boring as hell. And um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep supporting Marvel. I'm going to keep supporting Sony. And uh, I'm just excited for Uncharted 4 next, next year, man. It's as simple as that. So I will yeah. see you um, I will see you next podcast. I'm going to pass this on to Gamer316. That was awesome. I'm tired of the drought again games right now. We need more games right now. I'm just, just uh, looking forward to GTA 5 on PS4 and MGS5. <laughs> Those two games will last me a while. On to him. All right, so my closing thoughts. Um, Destiny, LBP3, there's a couple other games. I forget exactly when they come out, but uh, that's my kind of wish list right now. Don't really have much else to say. Oh, yeah, if they did remake Final Fantasy VII, they should add a leaderboard to the Golden Palace Golden saucer. Golden saucer. Yeah. Here's the one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put a. Add arcade games on that. Yeah. Put a. E-bike. Online version of that. Be yeah. like, oh, look, this person did this. I love the submarine game. Yeah. One of my favorites. That would be really fun. That would be a more interactive way of doing <laughs> things. Yeah. That's about it for me. Alright. For me, uh. PlayStation. I mean, uh. I'm great. I'm um, very thankful to be part of the uh, PlayStation family. Um, it's an honor. I'm continue serving the great cause. Uh, but PlayStation Vita, come on, man. I love that system. Uh, I want to hear more about it. Uh, you know, I don't want to just like be phased away. I mean, I, I, I'm getting that impression. And uh, this summer, the summer season has been a drought. You know, all these games I've been looking forward to, man. And they're all showing up at the ending of summer. When it needed some delays. Short too. Summer. Yeah, too many delays, man. Too many delays. <laughs> all the good stuff is coming out now when I'm saving up for bigger stuff. And then, like now it's like, okay, I got all these games coming out for the Vita that I've been wanting, but they're all showing up at the same time. Don't, like, don't do that. I mean, I don't know if that's a good problem or what, but I mean, what's annoying is that there's a big drought of games and then everything wants to show up at, the, at one time at the same time. It's like, you know, it's like completely dead and everyone's trying to get into a revolving door and like everyone gets stuck and I can't like, I'm just like, what's going on? That's how I feel. But anyways, uh, no, to try not to repeat that. Uh, more love for the Vita. At least Japan, you know, releasing good stuff. Gravity Rush 2. Yes, I want to see that at Tokyo. Yeah, that's the game I forgot to say. Gravity Rush 2. <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, Tokyo game show. But uh, anywho, about it. Looking forward to Sword Art Online. Looks like a dope game. This guy yeah. four, maybe. But I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> uh, Shinobi versus looks dope. And uh but anyways I'm passing the torch over to Mr. Orfeo. Go for it, comrade. Me? I would say that I like I enjoy games comment, I enjoy both Microsoft's and Sony's press conferences. Uh and I look forward to T G S next month. That's probably when everyone will hear from us next. Uh I'm hoping got my fingers crossed for Last Guardian. Who knows, maybe that might get exclusively ported to the Vita. There we go. There's a, there's a reason for people to pick up a Vita. Uh, and Monster Hunter. I hope that comes to PlayStation platform as well. I hope that's announced there. But uh, that's it for me. Uh, Gamescom was great, but we wanted to Tokyo Game Show. Also, real quick, just real quick, from the bottom of our hearts, the guns to the hell gas, rest in peace to Robert Williams, for sure. Rest in peace, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, so right, if, you, if you start stuck around the, the song, thank you so very much. <laughs> yeah, like we're yeah, going to try and continue to keep making these podcasts better and more concise. So from the bottom of our hearts, once once again, we appreciate you listening. And uh, Orpheo, take us away, man. Yep, yep. We look forward to uh, your feedback on our YouTube channels, uh, especially this podcast. If you have any comments, any suggestions, go ahead and leave it in the comment section or leave it in the comment section of our website at gunsofthehellgas.com. We also have a group Facebook page. Just search for us on there. Or you can follow us on Twitter at Gasly Media. So thank you for listening. This has been Episode 3 of the Gasly Media Podcast. See you next month. Bye. Peace. Uh,